Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. The images that move you the most, what we deliver the best. Brought to you in part by American Airlines. Know why you fly, we're American Airlines. And by Days In, the best value under the sun. We are the lucky ones. What a part of the country for college football. Sooner territory as Oklahoma makes their way out of the field to take on the leaders of the Big 12 North, the K-State Wildcats. We go downstairs now to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joel, just about ready to go down here. Something to keep an eye on the playing surface. This was a scene a little over a week ago after the U2 concert. They had to resod the field. That's right. 80,000 square feet, one ton of grass. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. And if that field holds up tonight, you know, it's been raining, it's been cold. The Sooners say they're going with the molded speed TD cleat, just like Dave Lapham used to wear. They're not going to do anything different. We'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on the field, guys. Now, Noxie, were you wearing that cleat for the U2 concert when you and Jennifer were here? I was there. This is it. So Noxie. you were on the turf for the last time. Noxie's quick. Noxie has those molded shoes. He's quick now. Josh Cherry tees it up. Wildcats will kick it away. And we're just about underway. Oklahoma at home for the first time since October 10th. Homecoming on Halloween in Norman. And here we go. It'll be Dominic Franks over to the far side. Will he get it? No. Out of bounds. Great field position right away for Oklahoma. And as we get ready for this game, don't forget K-State is a totally different team on the road and at home. Something we'll talk about a little bit later as we look at our starting lineups. And Landry Jones, now it is his team. We'll talk about Sam Bradford a little bit later, but Sam Bradford through at Oklahoma. At least that's what the plan is to enter uh, the draft this coming summer. Uh, a surgery for Sam Bradford for the AC joint. So the redshirt freshman from Artesia, New Mexico, Landry Jones. Sam Bradford had uh, surgery down in Birmingham, Alabama. Dr. James Andrews, very successful surgery. It took less than an hour to have the surgery completed. Chris Brown starts in the backfield. Man, it'll be Brown off the right side. Good yardage. About seven on first down behind a huge offensive line. The anchor on the left side is left tackle Trent Williams, but the real story is Brody Eldridge. This guy started everywhere. Center, tight end, last couple of games at guard. Chris Brown gets the start. We'll also see DeMarco Murray. Four wides. They spread the field. DeMarco Murray did not play last week. He's had a gimpy ankle for some time, Dave. Yeah, he heard it in the third snap against the Longhorns. Finished that game, but couldn't go last week. So first start making a second and short and they give it up to the wide receiver and nice blocking bending to the boundary Ryan Broyles their catalyst boy as he turned it up over the last few weeks the sophomore from Norman and he's got a first down in K-State territory our Phillips HD starting lineups Fitzgerald leads the K-State defensive front in sacks he's got six so far Bullock is the senior from Wichita the most experienced and they go hurry and I mean a tempo offense and they've got a first down going to the tight end yep Hannah's got it so as we look at the secondary and it's going to be a tested secondary for the K-State Wildcats Tyson Hartman's been their big playmaker in fact four interceptions and opportunities for more on our Phillips HD starting lineup their defensive 11 for K-State so for Oklahoma, they go quickly all the way down to the 15 yard line. It's going to be first and 10. Spread the defense. Ton of time. Over the middle. Easy play. Does he get there? Yes. Touchdown, Broyles. Wow. Man. Didn't take long. That was fast break on grass right there. Man. You have the cluster, the, the three receivers spread to the left, run a little crossing route underneath. Watch the yards after contact and after catch. Royals, phenomenal. Runs a 4 4 40 and he benches 325 pounds. Royals is only 5'11, 178 pounds. He's fast and he's deceptively strong and powerful. Dress Way with the extra point. Not Jimmy Stevens this time, but Dress Way, a change there at place kicker. And an early 7 0 lead, so it took a minute, 13 seconds, four plays, 60 yards. Ryan Royals, another score. 
Oklahoma. Prohibitive favorite coming in and already on top of the short field. And we talked about Landry Jones, and all of a sudden, one of the emerging stars of the Big 12, Ryan Broyles. And boy, is he involved early. Well, he ran a little jet sweep with him and great blocking on the perimeter. Tight ends, receivers doing an outstanding job. And then a little shallow cross pattern, catch, make people miss, finish. Great job by Ryan Broyles. His ninth touchdown reception of the season. That leads all underclassmen in college football. He was already leading with eight. He just tacked one on. Kevin Wilson was great. I mean, he ran a traditional uh, uh, play to start the drive with Chris Brown, and then he ran the reverse to Broyles, and then out of pocket, he gets his quarterback, Landry Jones, you know, throwing the football to his tight end hand. It involves everybody, and then traditional in pocket touchdown pass. Kevin Wilson had Kansas State on their heels, Joel. Yeah, well. Banks bring it back, he will, from the one. Brandon Banks has been up to the sideline, and a good job by Oklahoma against one of the most dangerous return men of the country. He's already got three touchdowns on returns this year. Brandon Banks, a senior from Garner, North Carolina. So, K-State gets it a lot faster <laughs> than they wanted to, at least under the circumstances. Grant Gregory, Carson Kaufman has played some this year, but Grant Gregory is who they're going with now, the senior from Athens, Ohio. Uh, Better wheels when you talk about quarterbacks at K-State. Kaufman, the thrower, Grant Gregory, the runner, and that's what they want to do. They want to run the football. So a first down for the 20, and as soon as I say that, he puts it up for Mastro, it's deflected and almost intercepted. Close to a pick for the safety, Carter. Off the tight end, Mastro. Up front, Nick Stringer. He's got the most experience their left tackle, a 6'6", 285 senior from Topeka. Daniel Thomas better than 800 yards, 102 yards a game. Total yards, he's leading all Big 12 ball carriers from Bill Snyder's Wildcats. But they have not won on the road this year. They're undefeated at home, 4-0, 0-3 on the road. And what an environment to play in. Quickman goes outside, it's Banks. Not much yardage as he's popped out of bounds against one of the leading defensive groups in the nation. Our Phillips HD starting 11. We talked about the All-American, Jeremy Beal. Don't forget, our uh, Gerald McCoy. Don't forget about Beal. He's been hot on the outside. Austin English as well. Travis Lewis, he was the second team All-Big 12 last year. And they've got serious talent on the outside with Franks and Brian Jackson, playmakers. In fact, Jackson, four straight games with a pick until last week's matchup. They won the game. He did not get an interception, though. And the win at Kansas. So now third and about six from the 24. Here comes the heat, and there goes Grant Gregory. All over the quarterback. We talked about Beal. And McCoy. Well, all, all they did was overpower Kansas State up front. Watch these guys just get up the football field and get after a little tackle and twist, and both guys come clean. A little crisscross. They switch lanes up, and McCoy and Beal meet at the quarterback. That was just a dead sprint to the quarterback, and Bill Snyder's concerned with what he sees right now. Dress what, or check that. Ryan Dora gets into it. Man, not taking the fair catch. Broyles makes a miss. Broyles, look out. All the way down inside the 40 to the 35. Is it going to be ugly early if the guy's in purple? Two and a half minutes. Sam Bradford on the sideline supporting the Oklahoma Sooners already had the surgery on the throwing shoulder. And it's amazing what he accomplished his two years as a starter for the Oklahoma Sooners. And you look at the records, the Heisman that he won last year, all-time leading passer. Did a lot in a short period of time, Dave. He sure did, Joel. You know, he, he starts as a freshman and, and leads the country in pass efficiency. His sophomore year, he wins the Heisman. Are you kidding me? That's pretty dynamic. And then, of course, this year it just couldn't get over the injury to that right shoulder. And smart decision, get it uh, surgically repaired. He's decided that uh, that he's going to go out and make himself eligible for the NBA, uh, for the NFL draft. He's not going to do it until the get an agent until the conclusion of the season because his presence is still a factor, Joel. This team totally respects him. He's got all kinds of experience that he can impart to his young uh, uh, backup, Landry Jones, who's now the guy. So he's valuable on that sideline. On first down, they put DeMarco Murray in the slot. Boy, what a pocket. And almost intercepted. He went in the direction of DeMarco Murray. And good play defensively by Felder. Well, we talked earlier to Sam Bradford about his decision. I've dreamed about coming here uh, 
you know, the first time I got hurt this year, it was tough, you know, sitting on the sidelines, but I always knew I was coming back. So, you know, that kind of, you know, was the light at the end of the tunnel. But, you know, to make this decision and realize that, you know, I've probably played my last game in Oklahoma, uh, it's really tough. That's to Marco Murray for first down. I want to add something that he said earlier to the press here. He goes, we're going to see how the surgery turns out. Because if it's not as anticipated and the recovery is not there, then he's going to delay his decision on well, turning pro. Yeah, and, and the surgery went exceedingly well. Dr. Andrews was very pleased with it and see how the re rehabilitation goes. But you saw how emotional he was. Sam Bradford had to turn away from the press conference, and almost tearing up, talking about his decision. Ton of time and overshooting Adron Tunnell. So it's going to be second and ten after the first down run by Murray down to the 23. And, and let's get back to that thought and hear from Sam Bradford about not signing with an agent and what's potentially coming down the road for him. I'm not going to seek an agent until after the season. Uh, you know, by doing that, I'll still be able to travel and uh, you know take part with this team. Uh, you know, if surgery doesn't go well, uh, you know, if there are some complications and maybe. You know, it's not as planned, and I do have the possibility of returning, but, you know, hopefully that's not an issue. Dewan Miller, touchdown Oklahoma on the broken tackle after the catch from Landry Jones. Well, the last time we saw Landry Jones, Joel, he had thrown six touchdown passes against Tulsa, and that's, that's a school record. And you got, you know, Heisman Trophy quarterbacks here. And who set the record for most touchdowns in a single game? Landry Jones. Well, he gets right back and busy. Miller, 6'4, 225 pounds. With all that speed, are you kidding me? They just keep running them on the field at Oklahoma. Trash way for the point after. So that drive took all of 44 seconds. I guess it was a seriously long drive the first time, a minute and 13. Boy, did not only the catch, but then the yards after catch. The tackle is missed by Joshua Moore, and it's. Yeah, the Sooners hit him early and often. Two possessions, two short fields, 14 to nothing, Oklahoma. Well, Landry Jones sees man coverage. You have safety on tight end, and you have cornerback uh, Moore on receiver Miller. And Moore is 5'11", 184 pounds, and Miller, 6'4", 224. You've got to turn to the outside, use the sideline as a 12th defender. One-on-one -on -one in space. Not sure enough tackling. Oklahoma's on the board when Landry Jones saw man coverage. And he saw that matchup on the perimeter. He said, I got to get that ball out there right now. It was out of his hands immediately. 11.41 left in the first 15 minutes of play. Over to the far side, Brandon Banks will bring it back from inside his own five. And the little guy is down just shy of the 20. It's time now for Phillips HD game break. Let's go back to Southern California with Darren Horton. Darren. Joel, it's been a day filled with comebacks and add the Hurricanes to the list. Final minutes, Ja'Cory Harris to Travis Benjamin and Miami is bowl eligible 28-27. Joel. All right, thank you, Darren. So, potential surprise of the making. Now, what a matchup. With Miami and Wake and Miami prevailing, but just barely like they did by a point over Oklahoma. Little swing action. Nice swing by Valentine. The pirouette. A couple of extra yards as he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, the loss of about five or six. Instead, a loss of a couple keys for the Wildcats. How about not playing catch up? Yeah, well, that's one thing. Uh, <laughs> The turnovers, you know, they're, they're plus nine in the season. They've had ten takeaways the last two weeks. They have to win the turnover battle tonight in field position. Right now, Oklahoma's winning that as well. Long fields for Kansas State. They can't go on eight, ten, twelve play drives against Oklahoma. They have to get short fields and put Oklahoma on the long field. Well, they started the last drive at the road 20. This drive at the 19, so the opposite of that. And they're only going up against the stingiest, second stingiest team of the nation when it comes to points allowed. Ugh. Valentine shut down again. So not Daniel Thomas, who was a little nicked up coming into the game, but Keith and Valentine, the senior from Baton Rouge. Keys for Oklahoma. Spot yourself 14 early. Yeah, well, that quick start. That was that was one, one of the biggest things that I thought because, you know, as we know, Kansas State's not built to come from behind. So get off to that quick start, which they've done. And also third down. You know, Kansas State has a tendency to, to grind the clock on you. They, the time of possession is a big deal with them. They're over 34 minutes a game. 
you have to put them in a lot of third and longs. Oklahoma wants to convert close to 45% on third down and keep Kansas State under 30%. So now third and 14. Ball back to 15 of the Wildcats. Gregory flushed out. And giving Chase Beal gets to him. Not exactly his job. This defense gets better by the week. Just ask Texas, ask Miami. Uh, this could be an undefeated team. You take five points and swing it the other way. Three losses for Oklahoma by a total of five points. That's how close they were to an undefeated season so far. And Jeremy Beal has seven sacks on the season before that play and ten tackles for loss. So he's added to those numbers. Now there's no doubt Gerald McCoy gets a lot of double teams, but boy, you can't put Beal out there one on one. Door with a low wobbler. It takes a K-State roll. And they needed it. So it goes all the way down to the 39, and that's where Oklahoma is going to have it. Time now for our fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. How about the versatility award for Brody Eldridge? Well, Brody Eldridge a couple years ago was all conference fullback. And he's played tight end. Injuries, well, you know, in the offensive line, he's gone to center. He's played left guard. I mean, he's the only person in Division One football that's played three different positions in this season at the line of scrimmage, not including special teams. He's played tight end, center, left guard. Great football player. He's making himself some money. Chris Brown stays in the backfield. And Chris Brown gets the call. Shut down after a bout a gain of four. Well, for more fearless predictions on every college football game, log on to FoxSports.com, and the keyword there is fearless. And he is fearless. Brody Eldridge had 19 knockdown blocks last week against Kansas. He was the lineman of the week. He might be the most valuable player this year for Oklahoma with all he's done. Now Jones on second at about five. A little wide. Broyles kind of pulled back on it, like he potentially saw something out of the corner of his eye. And here you are looking at that that third down and, and huge in Oklahoma's eyes to convert on their end of things and don't let Kansas State convert on third down generate some three and outs and get Kansas State off the field not let them milk that clock. Third oh. mid range and Donald he's got the first down grab is made by Dewan Miller who's got the touchdown the last touchdown he's a sophomore from but touch in New Jersey big kid 6'4", 225. You get inside of Darius Thomas that time and you get that inside position and boy he can snatch the football. I mean he's got some big old muckers he just plucks that out of here. Landry Jones though he can spin it. Right, he's, he's getting it there accurately. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Let's not forget about the dart thrown by Jones. It'll be given to Broyles. Yeah, pretty good in sync. In the handoff and the rhythm of the play, it got five. Usually goes for a lot more. That was the same play that they ran on the second snap of the game, but from the other direction. It's just the jet sweep. They bring Broyles in from the slot. And they time it up where they run the little sweep with him, and he got he gassed him for bigger yards the first time. And second and five. Brown stays with the backfield, looking in that direction. Will they swing it out? No. And it's dropped by Jazz Reynolds. His first career catch came at the Baylor game. He was a, an addition because basically the Caleb's and other wide receivers were nicked up. So they went to Jazz Reynolds. And Landry Jones getting out of pocket once again, changing the launch point. Kansas State in the last two games has 10 takeaways from nine different players and 10 quarterback sacks. So Kevin Wilson has got an athletic quarterback that can move around a little bit, and he's changing that launch point. It'll be another third down for the Sooners. Boy, pocket protection's been incredible. Hanging under, yes. What a grab by Broyles, and he was popped. Yeah, he was high load there. He did the flip, and he's he's a little slow to get up. Now remember, he had a crack of his shoulder blade, a hairline crack of that shoulder blade, and he toughed it out, and he's back playing. But if he landed wrong on that thing as he did the flip, I bet that couldn't have been too comfortable. Goes airborne, take the legs out. Boy, and then and then the fierce hit, and you land right on your shoulder. And I don't know if that's the one that's injured, but that one point landing on that shoulder, you have a hairline fracture in either of your shoulders. When you no land on your upper body like that. Offensive pass interference. The result of the play stands. First down. Yeah, there was a late flag. Right. They yeah. thought Tom Walker, our referee for the Big 12. They thought there was OPI offensive pass interference. There wasn't. Picked the flag up. 
in uh, the play stands and Ryan Burrell showing the toughness so, that the coaches already know he has. Oklahoma's first drive at their own 40. Then they had it at the K-State 35. Now starting to their own 39. They've got it at the K-State 35. Swing it out quickly. Rolls again. Boy, he gets a lot of touches. He's got it for eight, almost nine. Their leading receiver coming in, and he set an Oklahoma freshman record last season for receiving yards when he had 46 grabs. Jazz Reynolds does a great job blocking for his compatriot at the wide receiver position. Watch 16 in the red right there. Sustained. Nice. You know, get after it. Good inside out pursuit by Kansas State, though. Brown needs two for the first down. And he's going to be, I believe, short by about a yard. Jazz Reynolds, who you're talking about, in the screen right now. He was trying to help out Chris Brown. Reynolds, a uh, first year freshman, he's out of Eisenhower High School in Houston. More and more we see coaches not all that timid about going with first year, as they say, true freshmen, because a lot of guys are going to be gone after three anyway. Yeah, sometimes too. It'll be third in the yard. Brown gets outside and he's got the first down. Good field vision, good awareness. It was, the hole looked like it was up the middle, and it was closed in a hurry, so he went off tackle. Felder on the stop. Well, you have the, the balance going on now for Oklahoma. They can run it and throw it equally effectively. How about tempo? Landry Jones wheeling. Man in the end zone, just wide of Broyles. And Broyles with a collision over on the sideline. And will they give it to him? Will they give him the catch? Yes. They yeah. say it's good at the one. Well, he took Boy. out a parabolic microphone yep. over there big time, but look, look at him get in and out of cuts, you know, and, and, and a little separation there. Repeat first does down. He, does he have either foot down with possession of the football? Yeah, he, it looked like he dragged it. The, the, he, yep. he, the, the, le the left foot is down, the right foot isn't. Coming left foot back is down. anyway on the penalty. That's just doesn't diminish his effort. That's just like ballerina like on the sideline to, to catch a ball coming in with that kind of velocity and RPMs. And be able to get your foot down before you get the other one out of bounds with possession. Great effort by Broyles. Five yard mark off uh, against Oklahoma instead of first and goal. First and 15 back to 27. DeMarco Murray up the middle close to another first down. He's got 13 plus on the carry. Well, th this is what Oklahoma has to do offensively now spread the field with three and four wide receivers, run it and throw it. They don't have the big tight ends anymore. And the tempo and look at the offensive line sustained blocks. I mean, that is a great crease right there for DeMarco Murray to take advantage of. Deep set for Murray. Man, he's got the first down. It'll be first and goal. Just driving it down to the seven with a good lead. And he's the bigger of the two backs. 6'1, 220. Browns 5'10, 200. Great pad level. Low man wins in football. It's just physics. And that time Murray got the got the pad level lower and just kept pumping those knees. First and goal outside of the seven. Ton of time again for Landry Jones. And Jones will take it down inside the five. So good coverage. Give the secondary credit there for Kansas State. Oh. Right now, Joel, Kansas State's defense is starting to get tired. They've been on the field a ton. Of the whole game. And they're, they're already starting to fatigue. And the tempo is extraordinary. And, and they're in great shape and they're well coached. But Oklahoma's X's and O's are, are quicker, faster, and stronger than Kansas State's right now. Granted, we're only 10 minutes to 10, but their offense only had it for six now. So the defense has been on the field the entire game over the middle back line. Broyles can't hang on. Wow. And he chunk thumps his chest saying, that's on me. And it was. Landry Jones put it in there for him. Watch, watch the route that he runs along the back line of the end zone. Frees himself up. Boy, he has a touchdown. I mean, he's looking it in. It's not like he didn't look it in. He's looking the football into his hands. Just could not secure it. Just uh, happens. Drop pass. Landry Jones looking back to the bench. And it missed on a third down. Yet three for three. This is the third goal. On the slant. And flat down on an uncatchable ball. DeJuan Miller was hit early, but there's no way in the world that ball was catchable. Darius looking against Thomas. Darius Thomas. Yeah. Now he, he definitely goes to the receiver to make a play on the football. Where was the football? As he as That's he as he takes defense number 15 penalties in the end zone. Ball be placed to the two yard line. First down. Yeah, he made sure he couldn't go up to get it. Yeah, he did. He pulled that right that right arm down. And, and Miller's a big man, as we said, six four two and a quarter. There is Thomas, six uh, six feet, 185 pounds. 
and uh, Vic, Vic Koenig right now, defensive coordinator we just saw, is is basically in a scramble. I Boy, mean, how tough is it to make personnel substitutions? Oklahoma is just anything they want to do, they're doing right now. They are in total sync and they're totally balanced. They want a timeout. Yeah. Bob Stoops is getting it. They got it before they got mm -hmm. a false Oklahoma. start to the left First side of the offensive line. 30 second timeout. 447 left. In the first quarter, all Oklahoma, they have dominated the proceedings so far. As I said, no first downs for Kansas State. And Oklahoma, and we were talking to some people before the game, has yet to have a real breakout game offensively. And we saw them in, in a shutout here. In fact, they've had back-to-back -back shutouts. But I'm talking about the offense really exploding for big numbers. This is an offense with Sam Bradford last year. Their last five regular season games, they scored 60 or more. Well, they, they scored 99 touchdowns. A college record 99 touchdowns that that's that's incomprehensible and the numbers there you see Kansas State minus 10 and Oklahoma's got a whole bunch of yards this is this has just been domination and I think right now you know even though it's tough the team now knows that Sam Bradford is not the quarterback and Landry Jones is so now it's Landry Jones is our guy we're going to have to operate with Landry Jones, and I think there's a sense of let's make a run with Landry Jones. If Oklahoma wins out, which they could very well do, they're looking at a pretty nice bowl game, and you never know. I mean, tonight, Texas and Oklahoma State, they're pounding it out. Depending how that uh, outcome is, Oklahoma's far from out of this thing, and right now they're playing like it. They're playing like they have a mission in mind. But they need help. Well, they definitely need they help. They need help tonight. And there's Sam Bradford uh, up in the uh, coach's box like another a, a, a second coordinator basically up in the box with one on the field. First and goal to the two. Murray stays in the backfield. Move the pocket. Back corner of the end zone. Low throw. Touchdown anyway. Ryan Boyles. Well, Royals had three touchdowns in the game we did against Tulsa. He's already got two here in the first quarter of this one. Sam Bradford likes what he's seeing. This this is in high gear. Watch Broyles. All he does is just take it to the back corner of the end zone. A broken coverage by Kansas State. Absolutely lost track of the leading receiver of the football team in the back corner. They're going to take a look at it Previous to make sure he's secured. Review. Make sure that he secured it and the ground didn't help him. It looked perfect. It sure did. <laughs> it looked like he got his arms, his elbows, everything under the ball. Yeah, and, and it's he's, he's got it in his chest. He's got his hands yeah. and arms underneath it. I, I don't think that's going to take long to to stay with that call. That's there's no evidence to overturn that one whatsoever. Great Del play by Broyles. Delay of game penalty on the review booth. <laughs> with 4:40 to play in the first quarter. If anything, games like this, and, and hopefully K State makes a game of it. It is very early. But sometimes you need a running clock as opposed to stopping the game for instant replay reviews. 17 of the 90 plays that have been reviewed have been overturned. I don't think this is going to be added to that to that mix. Let's take a look and see if Royals gets his hands on it. Great sliding effort. Gets his hands and arms underneath the football. He's got the ball off the ground. Textbook. Never loses possession of it. You know, I, I can see. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Yes. Like, you use that at a clinic this summer, will you, Dave? <laughs> yeah. They, they got after it quickly, though. You know, I want to make sure. I mean, obviously, Kansas State is in a desperation mode right now. I want to make sure that every touchdown that Oklahoma scores is indeed a touchdown because Kansas State is not built to come from behind 21 points if this extra point is good. And there's still four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Tress Way for the extra point. So it is 21 on the board early for the Oklahoma Sooners. No, it's not the start of the game. And it's not the second or third possession. We've seen Tressway do that before. Brandon Banks bringing it back just across the 20. He's got it up to 22. So Oklahoma gets their defense on the field with 434 to play. One of the bright spots for them this year for Phillips HD game break. Darren Horton once again. Darren. Joel in Evanston, number 12, Penn State, trailing by three at halftime. But in the fourth, Evan Royster takes the draw play and goes 69 yards. And add Penn State to the list of teams who came from behind today to win. Joel. All right, Darren. Boy, Iowa, Penn State, bunch of Big Ten teams coming from behind. So 
Oklahoma all over Kansas uh. State. Man, it's going to be a false start. Dead yeah. ball, false start. Offense number 67, five yard penalty, still first down. Kansas State has had six plays offensively, as they call that on Mayfield, for a negative 10 yards. This Oklahoma defense, one of the top five in the nation across the board. Well, if you're going to jump, get your money's worth. You get his money's worth. You get a pretty good lick on McCoy, but you can't, you can't do that. I mean, you know, you're struggling offensively. The last thing you want to do is have a pre-snap penalty and put yourself off schedule against this Oklahoma defense. Gregory keeps it. Maybe a yard. It'll be second and 14. Jeremy Beale on that stop. Our fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. Very good tight end. Now will he see it? Yeah, Mastrud is a is a very, very talented football player. And as you can see, has a good idea of time management. He's the epitome of a student athlete. He's about 179. He's 179 yards away from overtaking Childs as the leading receiver at the tight end position in Kansas State history. And for more fearless predictions on every college football game, log on to FoxSports.com. The keyword is fearless. Making a miss, Daniel Thomas. That's his first carry of the game. So we saw Valentine the first couple of series. Now Daniel Thomas, who's got better than 800 yards, leading rusher in the Big 12. Well, let's take a look at Mastrud, who we were just talking about. What's he doing on this play? Pretty good. Walls him off, walls him off, sustain, sustain. Pretty good job working against Beal, who's an outstanding defensive player. Got yeah, his second team all Big 12 last year. And they keep the drive alive, though. K State without a first down. They're looking at third and five. Comes back over to the near side, complete to Snipes. And they do move the chains by a yard in front of Dominic Franks. You know, you, you have to know exactly where to go for that first down, and he knew. Hook it up, and, and no yards after reception. I mean, they have to mark the ball at the spot of the reception because he was he was in in reverse after that. Franks with a very nice hit immediate. Almost scraped it away, didn't he? He was trying. He was ripping at it. Thomas stays with the backfield. So first and ten outside of the 33. Pass through the tight ends, the motion man. Seal off the left side, big yardage. Thomas spins he's right at the first down marker. He's about nine before he's put down by Brian Jackson. You see Thomas right there rotating that arm. He's got a shoulder that's beaten up. He's taken so many hits. He's carried the football so much already. Watch the blocking. Mastrud again in motion, seals the corner, and then he just bounces it outside. That's a very good running back. You know, Oklahoma offered this young man as a safety. So very versatile athlete. High school and junior college played quarterback. Oklahoma thought he could convert to the safety position. Kansas State said, we want you at running back. He said, I want to stay on offense. I'm going to Kansas State to run the football. Last week rushed for a career high 145 yards to the win over Colorado. And gets the first down. Less than a yard, got about a yard and a half up to the 44. So Kansas State to be successful. And it's tough to be successful when you're driven by 21, 10 minutes into the game, but they've got to hang on to the football. They've yeah. got to be able to run the football. They do. They want to they want to shrink the game. They're already down 21 points, but they want to condense the game. And that's the best way to do it is to be successful on the ground. And, and now Daniel Thomas. Three times this year, he's rushed for at least 135 yards. 135 yards or more in three different games is tied for third best in the country. He's been productive with regularity. From the 44, quick one outside the banks, and a nice open field tackle. Taken down over there by the D back on that side, Travis Lewis. And they, and they list banks at 5'7, a buck 50. I'd have to I'd have to double check that with a measuring stick. I'm not sure. Look at his, his numbers are barely out of the waist of his jersey. Look at how everybody else's numbers are up a lot higher than than Brandon Banks. And I'll tell you what though, that young man has got some courage, and he's got what Coach Snyder calls athletic speed. You know, he's not a track guy trying to play football. This is a football player that has outstanding foot speed. Second and nine after the good play on the outside defensively. Short side for Gregory. And he is popped. Shot down, quick cutter. The free safety. They had him low, they had him high. 
And it's only a gain of a yard. And this is Kansas State's running game at its best. Watch, they're going to pull linemen, and they're going to run the quarterback, and they're going to try to outgap Oklahoma. They pull the guard in the center. They get out. But, boy, Oklahoma does a great job of, of getting enough helmets in the area. Quentin Carter makes a big hit. He's a very smart football player, and he's a head hunter. But that was just great team defense, even though Kansas State tried to outgap him, had one more man over there at the point of attack than Oklahoma did. It didn't work out for him. Empty backfield. The quarterback, Grant Gregory, senior from Athens, Ohio. And movement on the left side of the offensive line. I think they were a little anxious to get the pass protection. Yeah, they, in, that, in that scheme, rolling the quarterback out the left side retreats and forms a wall, but they jumped early. Crowd noise. Couldn't hear. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense number 59, five yard penalty. Still third left down. guard, Zach Kendall. You could have called on a couple, though. Yeah, they, they were they were all moving. Watch the left side. They're going to retreat and try to form a wall right here. Watch them backpedal too early. Look, look at that technique. They're just like backpedal and you know get the quarterback rolling out to the right and form a wall back there. And Greg Gregory, that's the deal. But Kendall and Stringer, they were there a little too early. But man, they were moving those those feet though. Pretty pretty good quickness with the feet. So now third. And 13, but we'll have to wait till after the timeout. That's the final snap of the first 15 minutes of play. Good one on homecoming weekend, Halloween night, if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan. So the Sooners from the South, K State, the leaders of the North, and 21 to nothing, Oklahoma at the end of the first quarter. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Philip. We get ready for the start of the second 15 minutes of play at Norman, Oklahoma, in our direct TV game summary. With Oklahoma on top 21 to nothing. Boy, in Kansas State, a yard and a half of play. Thomas is averaging seven yards on lug, though, and Jones is tracking for a 12 touchdown game, and Broyles is tracking for an eight touchdown reception day. I mean, he set the record against Tulsa with six touchdown passes. He's got three in the first quarter today against Kansas State. And two of those three go to the guy that he's really got a nice little connection going with, Ryan Broyles. So now it's going to be third 13, first snap of the second quarter. This is not where Kansas State wants to be. Third and off schedule, third and 13 against this Oklahoma defense. And another procedure call, false start. It's a third and 18 coming up. Dead ball, ball start, offense number 85, five yard penalty. You know, honestly, this is a tough thing because. You have the, line, the offensive lineman at the line of scrimmage for a long time here in the crowd noise and at some point you just get a little bit antsy and you saw at the right tackle position it looked like to me Offner, you know just getting off the off the ball a little bit too soon. Yeah, they called it 85 but it looked like 75. Yeah it? it did unless the Stroop you know came off the line of scrimmage working his way down the football field in his route a half beat too early but crowd noise and you have to operate at the line of scrimmage a little more quickly than that I and mean, it's tough on the offensive line when you can't hear anything. And now a timeout is going to be called by Kansas State. Kansas State first of the half. 30 seconds. Well it's tough enough to play here and Bill Snyder knows what it's like facing Bob Stoops and what Bob Stoops has done here. They've only got two losses at home under Bob Stoops and and he knows it so well because he helped tutor Bob Stoops, who was an assistant under Bill Snyder right. at Kansas State. So Bill Snyder, after a three-year absence, Dave, coming back and, boy, turned around the program. Well, once he got it going, look, one, at this point, you look at some of the numbers. He had nine wins, 10 of 11 seasons. He had 10 wins, seven of nine years. 11 wins, six of seven years. I mean, once Bill Snyder got it going, the consistency, you know, you, you, you turn a program around and then you sustain it and that's what he did uh, he's on the upbeat again trying to get the program back I mean it wasn't in the pits that it was when he took over the first time but he's trying to get it back up into that upper echelon yeah, Bob Stoops was there at the start uh, low times 1989 was with him from 89 to 95 before he came here as the head coach of the Sooners now in his 11th season so on third and forever man, wide receiver never turned around and it was actually Daniel Thomas in the slot. Gregory had to get rid of it, so it's going to be a punt coming up for Kansas State. And yeah, Daniel Thomas read one thing, and quarterback read another. He goes right over to his wide receiver coach, one of the great wide receivers in Kansas State history, Michael Smith. And 
That's another thing that Bill Snyder did. He brought back a bunch of guys that he knows he can trust that either played for him in the system, coached for him in the system, or both. Ryan Dorr, freshman from Katy, Texas. Line drives one out. Royals backpedaling inside the 20. And a miss. Now a flag of the play. It's coming back. So go across the 40, but the point of the infraction is way back at the 17. Boy, but when Bros puts his foot in the ground and cuts, man, he is explosive. He is something else with the ball in his hands. You got to think legal, either illegal block in the back or holding. That's one of the two calls they usually make in this spot. During the run, illegal block in the back. Turn team number 25, half the distance to the goal. First down. It's Keith and Valentine who back up running back plays a lot of special teams. And let's take a look uh, as it oh, as it as it takes place right here. And obviously it's Oklahoma and that's Emmanuel, Emmanuel Jones. Emmanuel Jones, yeah. Pushes him in the back. That, that's a good call. Up the field he goes to no avail. So a long field for Oklahoma as they mark it off. Half the distance to the goal and they take it back to the eight. Bob Scoop's not happy about that penalty. <laughs> DeMarco Murray setting up with Landry Jones. And the opening minute of the second quarter. And the draft turned around and there was the ball for Adron Janelle. It was already long gone when he made his cut. Good yeah. throw by Landry Jones. Exactly. Throws a catchable football. I mean, that tight spiral. And, and, and it's soft. I mean, and that was a great catch, so he plucked it. Jones uh -oh. going deep over the middle. And just tapped away from Tanell. Boy, that saved the day, at least for the moment, Joshua Moore. Otherwise, it's probably officially a blowout. You know, just undercuts and gets the hand on it. Gambled and it paid off. He felt the ball was underthrown enough where he could come underneath the receiver and deflect it. But you got to bat it to the ground. Don't bat it skyward. I mean, he's fortunate that it tipped away, but what if he had tipped it and it just went straight up? Do you think he really had a choice? And the receiver had, yeah, <laughs> that, and that one, you just got to pound it to the ground. I think that was desperation. You can't tip it up, that's for sure. Second and 10 for the 22. Murray, Bulldog down. Felder first went over there on the edge. The end, the junior. I think he was trying to make, Roberts, Georgia. I think he was trying to make a one-handed interception. I mean, if he had swatted at it, I think he could have knocked it down. But you know, a lot of guys think they can make those one-handed plays, and I've, you know, guys do make them. Yeah, the time of possession as we continue from Norman, Oklahoma. Time of possession continues to be the most misleading stat and basically worthless for the most part in football. College pros, you name it. It's a middle screen for Broyles. It was never there. And it falls incomplete. But I bring it up, Dave, because K-State has had it for close to nine minutes in the first quarter to about seven now for Oklahoma. And it's never been a contest so far. So three and out. Yep. And, and or, actually, they had one first down. In Oklahoma, the, the coverage teams have been outstanding for Bob Stoops as well. Uh, the punt team. They've, they've only returned eight punts and they've returned those eight punts for a total of one yard. Oklahoma's third in the country allowing only one yard return. Going for oh. the block. They get away. Got and they got the ball yeah. so there's no flag. Well it was Oklahoma fortunate because they were going for the block right away. Bank stays away and it's back at the 34. Now right away the official was emphatic when he said it was touched. Tom Walker said right away it was touched by K-State. You be the judge. And they stormed the wall right there. Did he get a piece of the football? I'm not sure that he did, but 36 blocks since 2002, amongst the most in the country. Did he get a piece of the rock? The official said yes, no penalty. Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. Welcome you back once again to Memorial Stadium. Oklahoma all over K-State. Kansas State almost got the block. They got the deflection though, and they've got it now. At their own 34, best field position to start a drive for the Wildcats. And they made progress. Last time they had it, they got two first downs, the first two of the game. Grant Gregory. Underneath, Brandon Banks, look out. A little shallow cross. Boy, that took a while. He got there. Phillips HD game break time. Let's go to Darren Horton. Darren. 
Joel, the volunteers in the Halloween spirit. In black tonight, Jonathan Crompton with a little treat. 38 yards to Austin Johnson. Tennessee leads the Gamecocks 7-0. All right, an early score down there. Thank you, Darren. And now, some movement for K-State. Two minutes gone by in the second play. Keep Valentine in the backfield. Man, it's going to be Valentine. Ooh. Wrapped up at the safety Carter. I guess that's your definition of a solo stop. Yeah. <laughs> he will come downhill, and he's a headhunter. He's got some nice hair, too. Yeah, you and I both wish. Yeah. Carter's that's, a junior from Las Vegas. And that's that's his. I mean, that's not, you know, that's not extensions or anything. That's the real deal. You're getting in touch with the beautician side of things. Well, you know, it's Halloween. I've seen a lot of wigs. I've seen a lot of extensions <laughs> out there in the streets. That's the real deal. You, you can't pull on Superman's cape. And what, one thing you better not do is pull on the hair of Quentin Carter either. Second and nine from the 40. Little dump off Valentine. Nowhere to go. Corner came up. Brian Jackson took care of it on his own, basically. Wide receiver didn't help out and block at all. And it's going to be third and long. Well, look, at, look at what Oklahoma has done here defensively. They're in the top five in critical categories, in the top ten in everything. I mean, just every single category. They had seven players drafted in the NFL off their 2001 defensive unit. How many players will be drafted off of this defensive football team? I think this and the 2001 unit of, of Bob Stoops are the best of these have. Yeah, the one that counts the most, the one on top. How many points do you give him per game? Only 10 on average. First down, yes, good grab. Banks making a miss. That's what he does well. We talk about yards after a catch, kind of the escapability, and that's why Brandon Banks is in the lineup. He's a little guy, but he can make a miss. Yeah, the thing, he's got straight line speed, Joel, but he's got change of direction as well. And you can see him, barely, right there in the slot. And and watch watch what he does after the catch. The change of direction. Whoop, cut back. I mean, some guys have quickness, some guys have speed. This kid's got both. For the 27, deepest penetration, Gregory looking for a double move. Instead, it's the comeback, and it's complete to Snipes. And the best drive continues of the night for K-State. They've got it down to the 15-yard line of Oklahoma. And, and what they're doing, I like the idea of the quick throws. Del Miller and, and Dana Dimmel, the co-coordinators, get the ball out of the quarterback's hand and, and get it out where, where you can create a little bit of space, almost like a long lateral in, in the running game. Don't hold on to the football and run deep routes. Get the ball out of the quarterback's hands and let something happen because they're having a hard time running the ball against this Oklahoma front seven. Tough sledding. From the 15, first and 10, Kansas State on a drive that's starting at their own 34. Master the motion man. Here's Valentine. Big luck of a back flag on a hole. Coming back inside the 10, they got it down to the nine. Lewis on his back. Well, you never want to hold, but you most definitely don't want to hold in the red zone. And right now, Kansas State finds themselves Holding in the scoring zone. Offense number 67, 10 yard penalty, still first down. Well, Kenny Mayfield has, has jumped early. He had the false start early in the football game, and then he got called for the hole. So he's had 15 yards and penalties on him here so far, and he's exiting stage left. Let's take a look at what the big fella did here at the right guard position. Why did he get called for holding? Comes off the ball, double team. Yeah, he grabs the back of the jersey and, and pull. You can't get the hands outside the framework of the body. You know, and you got to move your feet a little bit more. Uh, slow feet cause lazy hands. At the 25, first down. Direct snap, wildcat set. Daniel Thomas outside all the way, close to the 10. Carter forced him out. We talked about the wildcat formation where he could run it or throw it. That time, a good run. Yeah, it really did. And when you get to the outside, you have to have somebody in the perimeter on the edge. And that's a good seal right there by Mastrud, the, the outstanding student athlete. And I'll tell you what, that's that's a running back that wants to get everything he can. Just Instead of just running out of bounds, Thomas slowed down, lowered the shoulder, and stung the defender as best he could. And Daniel Thomas, all-purpose yards, over 130 a game. He's calling timeout. It'll be second and six after the game of 14 at the Oklahoma 11. So the best drive of the night continues for K-State. 
Halloween homecoming. What a combination. Saturday night, Norman, Oklahoma, and K-State trying to get back into the game. They travel well from the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas. Joel Myers, Dave Latin, Jim Knox downstairs on a beautiful night. And the Sooners enjoyed it so far, but can their defense come up with a stop here? It'll be second and six of the 11. Tight formation. Thomas trying to make a miss, but they stand him up after a gain of a yard at the 10. Lewis, first one there. Weak side backer. Well, the biggest third down conversion of the game for Kansas State right here. You do not want to settle for field goal. You're down three touchdowns. You don't want to come out of it with nothing, obviously, but Bill Snyder would obviously love to either score on this play or generate a fresh set of downs inside the five yard line. Rather not have to trot the field goal kicker out there. So third and five from the 10. Now Gregory moving the pocket. Here comes the heat, goes back the other way for Mastro. Can he hang on? Yes. Yes, he does. First and goal inside the five. Down to the two. A what a play call. A great play call. It's a throwback pass to the tight end. You roll the quarterback out of pocket to the right. You throw it all the way back beyond the left hash mark. And Mastrud does a great Ooh. job. One handed catch, pulls it in, and takes it to the ground. Total control of it when he goes to the ground. He's going to pluck it with the right hand and pulls it in with the left. That's just an outstanding effort because coverage is, is decent by Travis Lewis. A great linebacker. Valentine in the eye. Behind Ray Wilson. Valentine, he's in. Touchdown, Kansas State, and they're finally on the board. It comes with 8.25 left in the half. That's a huge third down con conversion right there. That throwback pass to the tight end. Nice route. Better catch. Pretty nice throw as well because Lewis had decent coverage. It wasn't like he was totally fooled and beaten like a drum. Kansas State. They take advantage when opportunity presented itself. They cashed in. Josh Cherry coming off the point after. So they responded well despite the early adversity. But they've got to get a stop when we come back after the next time out. And let's see if they can get some more points before they go into the locker room to really make it a game. It's Locked. blocked. Free one. Franks has it. And he will be pulled down alertly by Dorr, the holder. So Austin English got his hand in and up. Taylor was there as well. So it's a 21 to 6 lead now. And the big guy got the low one. When we come back, Darren Horton in our college football Saturday studio. Stay with us. All right, thank you, Darren. And Oklahoma ready to get the football back for the fifth time. First three times. Easy drives, all resulting in touchdowns. Well, Brandon Banks got involved. So did yeah, outstanding running back Daniel Thomas. Had a long drive of 66 yards for K-State before we broke away. Took better than five minutes off the clock. They finally got into the end zone as Dominic Franks goes back, waiting for the kick. Austin English blocks the extra point, Joel, the second unsuccessful extra point for Kansas State this season. Those who's been doing the opposite side. And it's going to be. Running back wide receiver Madu from the two. And not much available. Good coverage down field to the 22. Well, time for our free credit report.com sign line report as we check in. Downstairs with Jim Knox. Knox okay, Joel, I'll tell you what, a little momentum change over here on K-State sideline. They came to the sidelines, everybody's a little poor pepped up. The coaches just kept saying, keep sawing wood, keep sawing wood. These guys think they can get back in it. Well, there's, I know one guy thinks that he can get back in it, and that's the head coach, Bill Snyder. And if, if they follow his lead, and that's the lead to follow, Bill Snyder is never going to quit on a football game, that's for sure. Chris Brown in the backfield. Man. They'll give it to Brown. With the fake of the decoy Royals, the misdirection. They utilize that. So look back. 
on the last drive for Kansas State and their touchdown. Well, they motion the tight end, lead with the fullback. Nothing fancy. I mean, good job up, up front by the by the offensive line and, and Braden Wilson, the big six foot four inch, 245 pound true freshman fullback, and a nice lead block. Pocket protection for Landry Jones. Wheels out and throws it away. So it'll be third and ten coming up. And all of a sudden, let's see if there's a little bow and a little change in the atmosphere here for Kansas State. Third and long. This is where Kansas, where Kansas State wants to get a little pressure package action here. Oklahoma leads by 15. Three of four of the third down tries. Too much time. And a first down for Dewan Miller. So Miller, the big target, going down to cradle it. If he leads him, Dave, middle of the field's wide open. And it all started with the guys up front, Joe, like you talked about, too much time. Watch Kansas, watch Kansas State doing some crisscrossing, and it's picked up effectively by Oklahoma up front. Landry Jones moving the pocket, catch by Miller again. And right at the first down marker, maybe a half yard shot. Just outside, inside rather, the 45. Well, the tempo. The tempo gets to a lot of teams, doesn't it? And that's what Oklahoma runs. No question. And Kevin Wilson's saying, you know, with, with the personnel they've lost, they have to go more up tempo. Now, single on the outside, DeWan Miller, and all locked up with the corner. Joshua Moore on that side. The junior from Pompano Beach, Florida, did a good job. Let's take a look. A little, little chicken fighting going on. You know, you turn around and find the football. You, you have a right to that spot on the football field as well. Joshua Moore does a good job of using the sideline as a 12th defender and presses the receiver, presses him to the sideline. Good job. So third, less than a yard. Brown in the backfield is the single. And now instead, it's also back clap of the eye. Power play. Brown's got the first down easily. And barely tripped up. Otherwise, big yardage. He's the midfield strike. You almost get the feeling if Oklahoma just wanted to run the football. They could. And, and they are. They're going big boy pads right now. They're going two tight ends, fullback, and pounding. It'll be Brown. Turns it in. Only a yard that time. Now, at one time, it was big boy pads. Brody Eldridge at tight end. Gresham at tight end. Now, Gresham, the first guy they lost. Brody Eldridge, because he injures the offensive line, has to move from tight end to left guard. All of that action, that big boy action, is, is gone. That's why they, most times they spread like they are now with three and four lives. Down a distance. Brown up the middle. Nobody at home. Chris Brown inside the 30. Will have an angle on him. The D back tried to punch it away. Joshua Moore saves the touchdown just the same. And he's hurt as he, he went down, made the tackle. Looked like he twisted something as he went to the ground. And he's riding in agony right now. He made a touchdown saving tackle, but he may be questionable how much more he's going to be able to do. But nice job up front. I mean, the offensive line fits and finishes their blocks. And then it's off to the races. And Brown knows that Moore's closing on him. He tried to punch it out of there with the uppercut. And it looked like Brown fell right on top of his right leg as he went to the turf and had it in a, in a funny position. Hopefully it's nothing more than just being shaken up. But the way, I don't, I, you know, maybe almost even had the wind knocked out of him a little bit the way he landed. Looks like he couldn't get, maybe couldn't get his breath. He's getting to his feet. Looks like he's going to be okay. Is he oh, cramping? I don't, yeah, Is he I, don't, cramping? I don't know about the wind. I wonder if he's cramping a little bit. It was a beautiful afternoon. Oh, he's just that that left that left knee is just locking away on him. Well, let's see what happens when Moore goes to the ground, punches it. See what happens with that right left leg. Oh, he fell on top of the right leg a little bit. I don't know. He looked like he's limping with the left leg more so than the right. But when he went to the turf, obviously twisted, and came down awkwardly. First and go to the five on a drive that started back at the Oklahoma 22. DeMarco Murray is taking over. Murray off the right side, taking tacklers with him. He gets four down to the one. A little extra action going on down on the turf in the end zone. A little frustration out of the Kansas State defense. Getting after it a little bit after the play was Darius Thomas. But, you know, the, the question is, was, was the uh, tackle that Joshua Moore made, is it a four-point save or not? With Oklahoma pounded in anyway. 
Murray again. Just slamming it straight ahead. He's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. It's got to be a, a, a very comforting feeling for Kevin Wilson to know that he could go big with the big formation and pound Kansas State in the running game. That drive was all on the ground. You know, Landry Jones lit him up in the air in the first quarter. In the second quarter, Kevin Wilson has gone to the ground attack a little bit to anchor Kansas State. And once he anchors him, he'll go back to the air attack once again. Tressway in for the point after. So five possessions for Oklahoma in the first 25 minutes of this game and four touchdowns. So a power play up the middle. The big back DeMarco Murray and the Sooners by. Welcome back once again to Norman Oklahoma and what a sight what a picture a picture. <laughs> Everybody having fun on Holloway night. That is a great shot. <laughs> Live in the moment. And right now, if you're a Sooner fan, you're savoring in the moment with 537 left in the first half. You know, Joe, Oklahoma football is so big. They, tr they did trick or treating last night instead of tonight to get the kids off the streets with all the traffic that was going to be out there tonight. Get him brought back by Banks. About a yard into the end zone for the little guy. A nice oh. lane over to the left side and tripped up. Has lost the ball on his way down with a say he's down at the 24. I say the ground caused the fumble. Yes. It was Matthew Moreland on the kick the kickoff man who brought him down. Let's take a look at the Lexus playbook at the Oklahoma Jet Reverse. You have a guy as talented as Ryan Broyles. You want to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. Bring him in from the slot. Tight little underneath handoff. Ryan Broyles. Good blocking the on the perimeter. Under further review. You want him to have the ball in space. He's so magical and so gifted. And that'll close the Lexus playbook right now. But you can run play action passes off it. There are other things you can do off the jet reverse look. We'll see if they do that or not. The play is under review. Did he lose control of the football before he hit the ground? Or did Banks lose it when he hit the ground? And he's cut on the tackle. He's, he's undercut. He's got the football and the ground causes the fumble. His elbow hits the ground, the ground causes the fumble. I think the call in the field will stand. So K State should have it at their own 24 yard line. Last drive. It was at the 34, they went the distance. Now, though, back at the 24. Against, as we mentioned, one of the great defensive units in the country. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down, first down. You know, you've got challenges going in, and Bill Snyder knew that going in because he's facing the number three rushing defense in the country. They only give up 70 yards a game of the ground, and there's not that much balance to begin with for K State. They rely so much on the run. Exactly. They're, they're heavy in the run game, the quarterback run game. They do have a lot of looks, a lot of different formations, but their bread and butter is to pound the football. Haven't seen much option. A lot of times with Bill Snyder, you will see the option to spread the defense out, but against Oklahoma speed, that may be fruitless as well. The best thing to do is run at him. Down to 24. Off the play fake, led Brandon Banks perfectly. He's got a first down and breathing room all the way to the 47. Good throw by Grant Gregory. Real good throw, Joel. Rolling to his left, he squares his shoulder pads up and and aims, you know, he's got his shoulders squared and aims right at the target. And he hits Banks on a little crossing pattern. And uh, so much respect for Banks. I mean, this little guy is fearless. There's nobody that can ever question his toughness. He's all about that. Offensive newcomer of the year in yeah. the Big 12 last season. Honorable mention all of conference. It'll be first down for the 47. And the Wildcats set Daniel Thomas. Look at his escape ability. Wow. He's into the secondary. He's got a first down. Jackson gets him. But going one way and then whoa, I'll see you later. The well, other was, way. That was the option look out of the Wildcat. You've seen Brandon Thomas uh, run run the dives out of the Wildcat. But here he goes down the perimeter. He's got his big his big fullback as a pitch man. And he decides not to pitch it to Braden Wilson. He's going to cut it back the other way. 
He feels comfortable in that position. Remember, he was a quarterback in high school and a quarterback in junior college. You can see he was slow to get up. He does have a bruised shoulder, but he's uh, he's sucking it up and getting after you. It's the left shoulder. You can see a little bandage underneath that uh, shoulder pad in the jersey. So first down at the 37. Thomas again. Spun around and down by Quentin Carter as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxy. Okay, news isn't good on K-State sideline. Josh Moore, the fine defensive player, is out for the rest of the game. Knee injury, that's what they're telling us. And hey, guys, you never know who you're going to find on the sidelines. Jim Culver right here. How you doing? Big Wildcat fan. Traveled with the team. There we go. Senior golfer. We love it. He can hit it. Yeah, yeah we, he can we hit enjoy it. watching Jim Culver to the champions tour. He can definitely strike that golf ball. Guys like Colbert, Lee Trevino, they really made the Champions Tour. They started it all off. Ooh. Got popped off the edge. Man, that was a hit. It was Keenan Clayton, the strong side backer. There's a reason it didn't get there from Grant Gregory. And, and Gregory knows that the, by the protection, this is his guy. And he knows he's going to take the hit. He stands in there courageously, and he took it. You could see the whiplash that he took. I mean, that's some serious contact right there. And the second contact is when you hit the ground and your head bounces off the ground. And that sometimes is even the tougher contact. Third long, third about eight inside the 35. Pressure up the middle on Gregory escapes wide open over to the left side. He's got a first down now. Carter will bump him out, but. Good recognition by the quarterback Grant Gregory and that's why he's in there because he can run a little bit. Yeah he can and, and what happened is Oklahoma lost one of their rush lanes. You know you, you can't lose your rush lane integrity and watch you get washed out and then he's off to the races and, and the Red Sea parted and all he saw was green turf. He knew he had a first down as soon as he tucked the football. The good thing he did was made an instantaneous decision when his lineman washed the twisting defensive lineman inside. First and 10 at the 14. Banks the motion man. Thomas stopped initially. Wow. Makes a miss again. Should have been a loss of a couple. Instead, it's a gain of a couple. Quentin Carter dropped him. The free safety. That's as good a one or two yard gain as I've seen in a long time. You, you said he, he, Florida looked at him as a quarterback. He was a Juco quarterback. He was recruited as a safety here at Oklahoma. He's an athlete, you know, and he just, man, he just he, he, he's, he's so aggressive. He's a downhill guy all the way. He's going to get every centimeter out of every opportunity. He is one tough customer. 6'2, 227 pounds. He can really move. Second and long. Keep the fullback Wilson in there. Option wide side. Gregory in trouble. And down with no gain. Austin Box over there. With Brian Jackson to stop. Well, this is why I'm sure Coach Snyder thinks, man, how much option did we run? Because every Oklahoma defender stayed on his feet and, and pursued the football. I mean, they had this thing just diagnosed and snuffed out. Everybody fulfilled their responsibility to a T. There was nowhere to pitch it. The dive man was taken away. Brent Venables and his defense make beautiful music together. Will they on this third and ten? Out of the gun for one of the few times tonight, Grant Gregory. And it's going to be a timeout. So, uh, Ruckus timeout. in the stands. Kansas they can State. make some noise at Memorial half. Stadium. 95 seconds, seconds left in the half. And how big is this with Bill Snyder in K-State? You know, looking back at the Dr. Pepper 2003 Big 12 Championship game, American Airlines presents that flashback. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Kansas State's a little guy now with the Chargers. Darren Sproles. He started against the top ranked Sooners, didn't he? All time leading rusher for K State. 235 yards that day. Caught this touchdown pass from L. Robeson. And the shot from Robeson went for 60 yards as K State upset number one. Oklahoma 35 to 7. And when you look at it, Bob Stoops counting championship games is 34 and 4 and he lost to his to his mentor Bill Snyder in that particular Big 12 championship game but Bob Stoops is 63 and 2 here at home 34 and 4 against big the Big 12 and they just they've, they've gone against each other a few times 
There's Bob Stoops right there next to next to Bill Snyder. Second season for Bill Snyder there. Yeah, and a lot of uh, Mark Mangino, Kansas head coach. Mike Stoops, Arizona head coach. I mean, a lot of head coaches in that in that picture right there. Bob Stoops working from '89 to '95 before he came here under Bill Snyder. Now Gregory empties the backfield, moves the pocket on third and ten. Quarter of the end zone, jump ball and out of the reach of Snipes. Latrell Snipes, the senior from Seattle, a transfer from Bakersfield College, was the intended target. And Dominique Franks all over. Yeah, Dominique Franks did a good job of making sure that there was not going to be enough real estate back there. I mean, he pressed it to the very back corner of the end zone. And even if the catch is made, I don't think he can come down in bounds. You know, they've got a blocked extra point. Now a field goal drive, 32 yards for Josh Jerry. He's 5 of 10 on the season. A junior from the Cook, Nebraska. A little right to left bend for him. Going to get more elevation than he did on the extra point. So from 32 on its way, and it's good. The points into the locker room. But still time on the board for Oklahoma when we come back. 28 to 9 Sooners. Good football weather. Halloween night, homecoming in Norman, Oklahoma. And welcome back once again. Dominique Franks getting ready and going back for the kick. Josh Cherry along with Moses Madu. Only game in town. Basketball's gotten a lot better recently, but still, this is football territory. It's put to the ground. Madu gets it right back, though. And Madu across the 25 to the 27. So they do have two timeouts left on the board, don't forget. And I'm talking about the Oklahoma Sooners. So far from quiet in the last minute 20. Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader tomorrow. You see the first games, the options. Pre-game show starts at 9 o'clock on the West Coast, 12 o'clock Eastern. Brett goes back to Green yeah. Bay. Whoa. And will uh, Brett win? two times this year against his old team after the win in Minneapolis. They're having fun tonight in Norman. Need some power. That face was shining. Little option pitch doesn't fool anybody. Staying at home with the play. Alex Reback. After the pitch for DeMarco Murray. Now the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Yeah, they tried to shovel past to DeMarco Murray and it was diagnosed very well by Kansas State. Bill Snyder uses that in his offensive arsenal as well. Screen, shovel passes, that sort of thing to slow down a pass rush. Oklahoma thought that Kansas State would be putting their ears back and shovel pass would work. Kind of surprised they're taking this much time in a high tempo offense. I think being thrown off schedule on first down was a factor. Yeah, they're going to go to the locker room. Like yes. Yeah. Uh, they're saying, yeah. you know, nothing happened on first down. Let's just uh, say, let's take the lead, go go in, make some adjustments, and don't make a mistake in our end of the field here. Yeah, that'll probably be the last snap. I'd be shocked if they did snap it again. Yes. They will head to the locker room. With a 28 to 9 lead. Landry Jones looks over to the sideline, but the staff says that's enough. So the Sooners do for an offensive explosion, take it out on an old friend of Bob Stoops. His old boss, Bill Snyder. Let's head downstairs and check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joe. Coach, you got to be pleased. You jumped out three quick touchdowns. You got close to 300 yards of offense going right now. Yeah, um, still disappointed we don't have a few more points, but, um, you know, Kansas State's doing a good job on some things, too. But, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we just take care of the football and got to keep playing good defense. Talk about Ryan Brawls. What a first half. That guy's tougher than Nels. Yeah, Ryan's a special player. He's a big play guy and uh, very competitive, so hopefully he'll have another big half. All right, thank you, Coach. Halftime in Norman, Oklahoma, and the Sooner is leading Kansas State 28 to 9 right now. Let's join Darren Horton for the Geico Halftime Show to show, Darren. Thank you. Harmony halftime numbers. Uh, and we talked about time of possession. It means absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, for Kansas State, if they if they had been able to stay in the game, 
Yeah, if they had been able to stay in the game, technical difficulties ever on the other side, but they were down, right? Well, they were down right away. It was 21 to nothing. Uh, a few minutes, 10 minutes into the game, they were down 21 to nothing. So talk about throwing a team totally off schedule. Well, yeah, and with Oklahoma, it means nothing. Time of possession means absolutely nothing uh, with Oklahoma. But Kansas State, their game is control the clock, shrink the game. But Oklahoma will score on you in seconds. FreeCreditReport.com, sideline report. Jim Knox, what's the latest? Okay, just got through talking to Bill Snyder. Needless to say, was not a very happy head coach. He said, we just got to play defense. We got to cut down on penalties, and we got to start playing with a lot of emotion. We'll see what happens here in the second half, guys. And maybe more team speed, which will come in time with Bill Snyder, but maybe not tonight until they continue recruiting. Yeah, you know, I, I think that obviously Oklahoma has more athletes. I mean, Oklahoma's exes are bigger, faster, stronger, quicker than most of Kansas State's O's. And that you can you can game plan and scheme all you want, but players make plays. Athletes make plays for you. Oklahoma has more athletes right now at this stage. And Oklahoma is not beating themselves as opposed to what Nebraska did in our game last week against Iowa State where they gave it away too many times going into the red zone. And, and that was a key in the first half, Joel. Neither team turned the football over last week. Nebraska eight turnovers, four in the, inside the 10-yard line. Iowa State won the game, but Nebraska beat Nebraska. Brandon Ranks will bring it back. The opening kick in the second half. They cut him off at the pass. He still manages to get back to the 20, though, when it looked like he was going to barely make it back to the 15. Now the possessions early for Kansas State. Three and out with a punt. The first two, they did get a couple of first downs their third possession before the score. Yeah, and, and they ended up going a couple of nine, nine play drives right there, but their first two possessions, seven snaps minus 10. And that's when Oklahoma put two quick touchdowns on the board against them. They were stunned. They have regained their composure, but when you dig yourself a uh, that big deep a hole against Oklahoma in Norman, tough sledding uphill. It's Mount Everest. It carries 55 yards. Daniel Thomas in the first half. Snipes is taken down by Dominic Franks immediately on the throw for only a couple of yards. And the leaders for K State, they picked it up the last two possessions as we, we saw. They found a little rhythm offensively. Yeah, and uh, first half leaders, you know, Grant Gregory completed a very high percentage. And you mentioned Daniel Thomas. He gives you everything he's got every snap. And Brandon Banks, I mean, that trifecta right there, the, the triplets didn't do a very bad, didn't do a bad job off to that slow start, though, and got in that hole. It'll be second. Man, about seven. Big move. Man, Daniel Thomas. Not Danny, but Daniel Thomas, a junior from Hilliard, Florida. Close to a first down, a yard shy. And re going back and re reinforcing, reinforcing the keys to the game for Kansas State. Well, only one turnover so far. Yeah, only one turnover in, in field position. Kansas State, uh, you know, it was kind of, a, kind of a wash there. Early in the football game, though, the field position was a big, big factor in favor of Oklahoma. Kansas State was backed up and... And, uh, and, and couldn't dig themselves out of that field position minus. And what was it, 10 turnovers forced over the last two games for Kansas State? Right. So third the yard. Thomas staying in the backfield. Yeah, driving. I think he's got it. He does. Out of the 31. And there wasn't a lot of room there for Daniel Thomas. So Ryan Reynolds, bottom of the pile. How would you like to work against Gerald McCoy? Well, one on one, it, it, it's usually it's tough duty. And McCoy, uh, you know, he, he gets the rip, gets up the football field, and get a little chokehold going around the uh, around the neck area. Not easy for Zach Kendall. No, it, it's it, McCoy is such a uh, got some quickness laterally. He's such a big guy, he can move laterally as well as somebody much smaller physically. Looking for the double move that was taken away. And now the jump ball over shooting the wide receiver Lamarck Brown on that side, the junior from St. Louis. So we'll bring up second and long. Second and ten. Reminded the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Brian Jackson, the coach, has been raving about what he's done. The last couple of weeks. I mean, all he did, they put him in man coverage on Shipley and Briscoe, Texas and Kansas. And, and I'll tell you what, Brian Jackson, 6'1, couple hundred pounds, long arms, he's a player. Showing the blitz off the edge. Dump it off the bank. Dominic Franks is there. Boy, take care of it himself. Didn't need any help. It's a loss of a yard. Back to the 30. Yeah, that's a tough guy to get solo. 
Yeah, it is in space. Banks on Franks. Franks uh, gets it done. There's another guy that's had a big career. He's a big playmaker. He's uh, he's responsible for three of the last three of the last four defensive touchdowns that Oklahoma defensively has accomplished. Franks has got three of those last four. Had one last week, 85 yard pick six against the Jayhawks. Third and 11. Ton of time. Good by the protection. And now, flag down to the play. And the reception for a first down goes to Snipes. Well, I think the official that threw the flag detected some holding on the right side of the offensive line of Kansas State. And Snipes has got a hitch in his get along. It took a long time. Then the linesman threw it. He's watching the right tackle normally. And the way. The way Kansas State is, is they're not huddling up with the ball with the play completed they're huddling up back they have a feeling yeah they're realizing holding Hold defense number 28 Ooh. well Kelly's a decline 19 yards down. 19 yards on that pickup to snipe so the drive is alive three minutes gone by in the second half they call Lewis the outstanding outside linebacker for the for the defensive hold Brent Venables very very high and Lewis he broke uh, Brian Barris for his freshman Tackle record. Can't really hit right here is where they call Lewis for the grab right there, and he spins, spin snipes around. And you know when you get a, a wide receiver lined up on a linebacker, that's a mismatch in your favor. And Kansas State run, went right to that miss, that mismatch. From the 49 of the Wildcats. Lewis has a lane. He's got a first down, and he's popped out of bounds. So this is the way Kansas State can actually get back into the game as they get it down to the 36, and that's what first down runs that don't put him in second and ten and Thomas hits it hard I mean he is a downhill guy when he squares his shoulder pads up to the line of scrimmage boy that's a nice little crease that he took advantage of there and he's the type of running back you cannot allow him to square his pads up to the line of scrimmage you gotta try to make him go sideways and square him up to the sideline once he gets downhill he is a snooper but outside the 35 Right now Thomas has 79 yards on 11 carries after that first down run. Use him as a decoy. Looking to the tight end master. And he's going to be dropped with a flag down to the play by Lewis. So hey. That's double jeopardy. You lose yardage and you've got a hold. I think you got a nice rough in the quarterback. Is first it? Yes. Yeah. Rough in the passer. Defense number 22. Yeah, he hit him right. yard failing from the end of the play automatic. First down. You remember that one yeah. shot he took from Keenan Clayton? It was helmet to helmet. That's and what that was, one was. Yep, it was, it was grill to grill, and it was close to a personal foul the last time. And here comes Clayton, and watch him hit him right up high. Boom. You know, he put his hands up to his face as well. And, you know, he, 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 really, for player safety purposes, you don't really have to do that. And he was flagged for it. For Kansas State on a two game winning streak, taking four of the last five, the surprise of the Big 12 North, trying to get back. It'll take a little while with 10 49 to play in the third. In the place where Bob Stoops has a 63 and 2 record. And he's won 26 straight at home. 27 now. Counting. If he wins tonight, 26 straight is a record. And uh, that's, that's, that's pretty impressive. The previous play ended behind the line of scrimmage. The penalty should go from the line of scrimmage. First down. To the explanation. And it's going to be a first down from the 23. So this is the first possession. Don't forget to the second half. This would have been the ultimate to start the game for K-State because they needed long time-consuming drives. Oklahoma though didn't need any time. And now the Wildcat is Daniel Thomas. He can't get away this time. Been better off bouncing outside and trying to get to the boundary around the safety Carter. Instead, Austin Fox on the stop, the sophomore from Enid, Oklahoma, one of my favorite cities in the state. <laughs> my mother in law's from Enid, Oklahoma. There you go. Is her name Enid? <laughs> Sad. What they did, Oklahoma defensively, everybody played their gap responsibility to perfection. And they had Daniel Thomas, you know, befuddled back there. There was no crease, no lane for him to hit. 
and he didn't want to turn a negative into a bigger Time negative. Out. Kansas State, first of the half. So K State oh. using a timeout early here in the second half, but they've got something cooking when we come back in the third. Oklahoma <laughs> on Halloween night. <laughs> I've had some wild Saturday nights. I've Madtown. I've been to Madison, Wisconsin on a Halloween Saturday night. Drew Brees threw 83 balls that night. Purdue at Wisconsin. Ooh. I've seen some crazy ones. It's a lot of fun being in Norman tonight. Now a second and long coming up for K-State. Opening possession for the second half started back at their own 20. Joel Myers, Dave Latin, Jim Knox. It's Sooner territory. 83 balls. How long did that game take? Six hours? There's a lot of fun. We were in a hurry. <laughs> Nobody was going anywhere that night. <laughs> in Madtown. Option. Daniel Thomas popped out by Carter. Oh, hit the and by the way, you know what? When I was talking about Enid, Oklahoma, yes, hometown of my mother-in-law, yes, the Price brothers, Brent and Mark Price, great basketball yeah, they players. Could they could definitely big time. They could Enid, shoot. Oklahoma. They could shoot. Enid's it. turned out a lot of talent. Such a little town. You're right. A, a lot of players across the Big 12 out of Enid. So now it's going to be third and about eight from the 21. 27 counting left in the third. Grant Gregory with pressure coming up the middle. And he's got his man up the middle for a first down. Keith and Valentine, the senior from Baton Rouge. So, it could, well, I thought it was a first down. It was right at the marker. And now they're going to say he's about a yard shy. Decision. Well, I think you got to go. And uh, down the football field, running some verticals. Checks it down underneath him. For the, for the completion and Kansas State brought the corner off the slot and, and dropped the safety over the top kind of opening up the middle of the football field and that's what Valentine took advantage of. They're in the eye of Valentine behind Wilson the big fullback Gregory looking for the signal from the bench with a check off. Valentine he's into the secondary touchdown Kansas State. Could be interesting, Dave. Well, with Bill Snyder, you never, ever give up on a football game. You never saw any panic in Bill Snyder and his coaching staff and the players on the sideline when Oklahoma took that 21-0 lead. They never, ever wavered. You didn't see game plans flying out of the windows up here of the press box of the coaches. They're just going to stay the course. That's what Bill Snyder's all about. Has total belief in his system. His players believe in him and his system. They are going to stay the course. Too yeah. early to go for two. Yeah, you don't need to chase points quite yet, but I think he might be. He is. I think he's going to. That's gonna, why I asked. I think he is going to go. It, all he did on that particular snap, and you know what? You think about it. How many opportunities are you going to have to score against this defense? You might want to maximize and capitalize every single opportunity you get. This defense gives up an average of only 10 a game. And a second of the nation quarterback draw. No, pop pass, Mastro, two point conversion. Daniel Thomas, he can run it, he can throw it, and he does to the tight end. Well, beautiful play out of the Wildcat. Remember, high school, junior college quarterback. Little jump pass like Tim Tebow down in Florida. Tim Tebow goes to the line of scrimmage and does the old jump pass. Watch this jump pass. Fakes the quarterback draw. Jump pass. Nice elevation and hang time. Mastrude says, Yeah, baby, we're down 11. At the two plays that have made this an 11 point football game. Let's look at the touchdown, Valentine's touchdown run first. Watch what Mastrude does to Reynolds, and Box goes inside of the lead blocker, the fullback. The linebackers create a huge cavity, a huge lane. Valentine took, takes advantage of our Keystone Light, always smooth moment is the two point conversion here. Watch the jump pass. Thomas to Mastrude. Now, Mastrude, a great block to set up Valentine's touchdown, and then he finalizes with a two point conversion. Sell it. Thomas sells it. It's going to be a run. Sucks everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Jump pass over the top. Watch the linebackers start to come downhill. That's that's about a 40 inch vertical right there to Mistrude. I'll tell you what, Thomas is definitely athletic. No question about it. Well, after trailing 21 to nothing, 28 to 6, it is now 28 to 17, so 11 unanswered. And should have. The Sooners, should they have taken advantage of the minute 20 plus they had with two timeouts on the board at the end of the second half? Or they shut it down instead? The time will tell. Let's see if it gets any closer. Moses Madu bringing it back from the two for Oklahoma. Looking for a lane over to the left side. 
and making the most of it up to the 25. So believe it or not, with 8.24 to play in the third, this is going to be the first possession of the second half for Oklahoma. And you see their drive chart for the first five. Not too shabby. And then they took the knee basically. They, they took a knee twice. Two, two uh, snaps minus two yards. The only time they punted, they ran four plays, 16 yards. Never had a one, two, three and out. That's the only time they didn't score except, you know, the old genuflect formation at the end of the half. I mean, they were productive. Landry Jones with DeMarco Murray. Swing action, batted back at him. Coming through Daniel Calvin, the senior from Bakersfield, California. And Daniel Calvin battling the flu this week. Missed some practice time. He didn't look like he was flu ridden on this play. Got the big left mucker up. Deflection. Second down. A look over to the sideline for the call. It'll be second in check. Little bubble screen to the flanker. That's Broyles. And run out of bounds. So high percentage play gets him almost five like a run on a sweep over to that side. And the leaders for the Sooners are the first 30 minutes to play. Well, Miller had more yards on his catches and a touchdown, but we, we already kind of uh, documented what Royals did. Chris Brown did a nice job in the running game, and of course, Landry Jones was spinning the ball pretty darn effectively in the first half. Very accurate. Well, better wise, Dave, this is a big third down. Yeah. Third and a little more than five. Jones, too much time, and it's knocked away. The D back on that side, Darius Thomas, a first year freshman out of Dallas, took it away from Tunnell. That was huge. Keys for Oklahoma. Well, they get off to that quick start, touched down their first three drives. That's a big plus, and they were five for six on third down. So, I mean, those were those were big, big pluses there. That's why they built that that big uh, first half lead. But Kansas State, poise, prideful. There he came roaring back and make, trying to make it a football game here. And a little magic for Brandon Banks. He's kind of quiet back there. They go for the block again. So Banks staying away from it. And it's out of bounds right around the 25. So what kind of nightmare is it going to be on Halloween nights? Oklahoma looked like they had plenty of haymakers and still more to come. But behind Grant Gregory, the regular quarterback. First down. Huge play. Well, it's confirmed. It's confirmed now, Joel. Sorry that it's the left shoulder, not the right shoulder that's sore. Gregory sees the lane. He's got a first down. Now he's got a block from his big lineman downfield. He found Offner and got a few extra. Brought down by Beal from behind, but talk about a shift in momentum early in the second half. Well, this is all Bill Snyder stuff now here. You have the option going after you ran the deep ball. And a good decision in the option to keep the ball. Grant Gregory ran the touchdown on an isolation, a, you know, just hammered inside with a fullback iso. Then you throw the deep ball. Then you run the option. He, met, he attacks the width of the field, all 53 yards, and the length of it, all 100 yards. Makes you defend the whole field, and he has an answer for everything. Thomas with a single to the backfield. Strong side, Thomas. He's dropped for no gain right at the 16. So three snaps, and even with no gain, they've taken it from their own 25 down to the 16. And there has been a dramatic shift completely. And the one thing is, we look at Bill Snyder over there on the sideline. They always talk about discipline with Snyder. They're yeah. not going to come unraveled. Right. They, they, they keep their poise. Think of the last few plays. Isolation behind the fullback for the touchdown. Jump pass for the two-point conversion. Go to the Wildcat, throw the ball deep. Run the uh, run the option. That time he ran the counter and pulled the backside lineman. He's got his whole playbook going right now. It'll be second and ten. Thomas trying to make a miss. Still battling. Yeah, it was Jonathan Nelson who got him. If he doesn't, it's a touchdown. Boy, is he strong. Yeah, he, you know, he's he's touched it over 30, over a third of the time. He touches the football. Thomas. He catches it. He throws it. He'd thrown two passes coming into tonight. And he's thrown two tonight. The, the pop pass, the, the, the jump pass touchdown, and the deep ball. He's two for two throwing it. I mean, he's run the ball. He is a weapon. He is a multifaceted, very versatile weapon. Third, man, about six. Three wide receivers set. Man, Gregory on the outside. He can run it. He's got the first down. Does he have the touchdown? No. 
knocking him out of bounds, Keenan Clayton. Otherwise, he gets to the pylon. It'll be first and goal at about the three. Well, and here's another play in the Bill Snyder playbook. Zone read. You know, you have a mobile quarterback, and you put the ball in Thomas's belly. And watch when he fakes the ball to Thomas what the defense does. Man, they all collapse, and they go that way. And now he has a run-pass option on the perimeter, and he just tucks it and gets to the edge. Can throw it or run it. Tuck it, run it. Get all you can, get out of bounds. Lost containment, didn't they? Yeah, they, they all sucked up on the on the run fake. Thomas, the single right side. He's in. Touchdown, Kansas State. Wow. Brand new ball game. Hard to believe. Well, I'll tell you, Joel, what separates good teams from great teams and what separates average teams from good teams is tough-mindedness. And Bill Snyder is tough-minded. And his football team is always tough-minded. And they got behind big on the road in a noisy stadium to Oklahoma. Panic? No. Poise? Yes. And look at how they've responded. And now the offensive line is starting to gain confidence by the snap. Now let's see if this is a gadget play because Brandon Banks just went over to the referee and said something. Well, th this is just a counter that that's, they scored on the touchdown, and they're going to go for two points again. Yes. Bill Snyder getting after it on a roll. Grant Gregory in the backfield, but there's a flag on the play. Delay Too much game. time. Yeah. Yeah. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the try. Do you want to kick? And. Yeah, draw within four, so a touchdown puts you up by three if you get the lead. You might want to go for the single here. Well, he's, yeah, he, at that point, the extra five yards in this, in this uh, compressed field makes it a little bit more difficult. He's disappointed. Felt like he had a play that was going to bring them within a field goal, going for that two point conversion. So they bring in the place kicker, Josh Cherry. He has already had. An extra point blocked. Hit a field goal though. Uh, 32 yards. And yeah, this extra point blocked again. Wow. Okay, go for two next time. <laughs> it's covered. Thanks. And he's upset. Yeah, and and, and yeah. rightfully so. It's got to be low. Yeah, it, it didn't look like tremendous penetration. Uh, all there are jumpers up the middle, and they're getting the hands up, and that, that's not that's not huge penetration. Ooh, that's real low. Yeah, and it's he's just driving the football. You have to get some elevation. He's kicking, he's kicking the middle of the football instead of the lower third of the football to get the elevation. Well, normally you see chip shots like you're talking about. That didn't even get to the lineman who was trying to jump up. No, it was that low. And he didn't use any uh, teammates to help him boost his jump or anything like that. All he did was uh, take a couple of steps up the football field and get airborne. And let's take a look at uh, Daniel Thomas, who has been a huge factor in this game for Kansas State. Running the football as a running back, leading the league in doing so. And he's got great vision and great patience and great strength. And he'll lower his shoulder and finish every run. He gets everything out of every single run that he possibly can. Now he's in the Wildcat. Jump pass out of the Wildcat for the two-point conversion. That's his touchdown and a little ISO following, following his fullback. I mean, he's done a little bit of everything here tonight, and he is an outstanding football player that hit one on a big odyssey to get to Kansas State. As the song says, what a long, strange trip it's been. And from originally committing to Florida, right. he ends up in the Little Apple and enrolling in July in Manhattan, Kansas. It'll be Moses Badu on the short kick. And the dude with a good return across the 30 out to the 33 for Oklahoma. Yep. Daniel Thomas once again a catalyst leading in rushing yardage of the Big 12 coming in. And so far today Daniel Thomas just on the ground and impacted the game in other ways obviously 88 yards on 16 carries. Quarterback in Hilliard had a great career in high school commits to Florida and he all, all the journey that he went on in. He's, uh, he's even touched it more tonight than he has during the season, 35% as opposed to 34 and change. Chris Brown. Now they're doing over to the left side. So three and out of the first series for Oklahoma is the momentum has completely shifted. And you wonder, you go back to that last 90 seconds of the first half when they decided, well, we'll take it to the locker room with a 28 to 9 lead. Well, I think at halftime, what Bill Snyder did to get his troops rallied and to make the adjustments that he made was, was unbelievable. And he's got Oklahoma's defense on their heels, whereas at the beginning of the game, they were on their toes. Rod Rattery, the tight end, middle of the field available. Chris Brown again, barely tripped up. So it's going to bring up another key third down. This time third 
and four. And a reminder, the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop at the company that supports college football. Overstock.com at home with the O. And as opposed to last week, 9-7 Iowa State over Nebraska. Nebraska beat themselves. Give Iowa State credit, but they couldn't move the football. Kansas State is getting back into the game on their own. The slant, and it's complete to Dewan Miller for a first down. So the first first down of the second half for Oklahoma with 3.29 to play in the third. And go to the big boy. We already said Miller's body, 6'4", 225 pounds. And he's going to get to the inside. And when he, once he gets to the inside, he's going to use that body to shield the football from the defender. It'll be a first down at the Sooners, 48. Pocket protection was key in the first half. Flag, it'll be a hold wide open. Going to the far side is Ryan Broyles, but it should be coming back. It was thrown by the referee. And the umpire threw his as well. I don't know if they saw the same player, but there are two handkerchiefs down Holding there. Offense number 77, 10 yard penalty, first down. And they both saw the same thing. So, man, Colton Free has got his, uh, I, I should say, got his money's worth with Stephen Good. Watch him right here. Get the big hook. Once you get the hand outside the framework and you put the choke hold on, they're usually going to call holding. Once they're even with you, they're by you. Once the feet are even, they're by you. And fourth penalty of the night on Oklahoma. 27 consecutive wins at home for the Sooners on the line tonight. A school record. Landry Jones with his cross shadow over the middle. It's Boyles. And he gets the penalty yardage back plus a yard. It's up to the 49. And that's what you have to do there, Joel. Don't try to get it all back in one chunk. Make it where you start to get yourself back on schedule. Take what the defense gives you and chip away at it. Make it a third and makeable instead of third and off schedule. Jones going out on the long throw to break the tackle for a first down. It's picked up by Tunnell. They've got some tall receivers. We talked about Miller at 6'4". Tennell's also 6'4". And Terrence Sweeney right here Ooh. misses the tackle. Once the catch is made, if the tackle's made, it's not a first down. But once Sweeney misses, first down move the chains. And Tennell trying to get off the field, but he can't. He's hurt. Yeah. Doubled over. Hate to see that seven-point stance. He tried to get over to the sideline. And Butler finishes the tackle. And did he fall on the football? Looks like he fell on the football a little bit. Got up okay. Yeah, looks now, like that left yeah. shoulder. Looks like he may, may have landed on his left elbow or left shoulder. He's really hanging that left shoulder big time, that arm. Yeah, what, after what happened to Sam Bradford right. with his shoulder injury, that makes Oklahoma fans sick to see a scene like that. Let's see him as he, as he tries to brace his fall. He, he falls on that on that right shoulder, and that right elbow. Yeah, Seemed like was, he's grabbing his right. left. It was the other side. Kind of crazy. Outside of the 39, first down Oklahoma. Moving the pocket. It's Miller. He takes a pop, doesn't he? He's down to Juan Miller. And it was Troy Butler, as you can hear it all the way up here with the hit. You know, you look at uh, Kansas State, their secondary, they have a lot of guys that have broken up passes during the course of the season. I mean, Hartman's got four interceptions. Uh, Lemur's got uh, two interceptions. Moore's got two. And they've knocked a lot of balls down. They just find themselves in the right spots. They're very, very smart back there. Second and short, bending it out is Brown. Real close, but he's short of the first down. What's really interesting, though, Kansas State should have 25 points on the board. They've had two extra points blocked. I mean, you take into consideration this Oklahoma defense, Texas averaged 47 a game going in. They held right. the horns to 16. Kansas, 39 a contest. They only had 13 last week on the Oklahoma defense. So for Kansas State to have 23 and it should be 25, two blocked extra points on real low kicks. That says a lot about the tenacity of this team to even get back in it like this. And they held both of those teams to more than 200 yards less than they've been gaining as well as the points. Now on third and a couple. Flag contact. He's trying to get it to Jazz Reynolds. Thomas is all tangled up with him. That's Darius Thomas. Yeah, Darius Thomas at the top of the screen here. 
the contact and the grab before the arrival of the football. That's what the flag is. I think it's going to be pass interference. Yeah. Defense number 15. First down to spot of the foul. Yeah. First down. Hey, Dave, it helps the ball it was there before he turned around because he still was engaged. Yeah, but he grabbed his arm before, right. before the football got there and couldn't even make a play on the ball. He wrapped them up well well before the ball got there. Let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. I word on Tanel looks like they're working on his left shoulder, guys. So it looks like right now he's a great deal of pain working on the left shoulder. Huh. First down for the 28. Man. Hold coming up again. And it all come back. It was called on Trent Williams. So Oklahoma making mistakes now early in the second half. Holding offense number 71 10 yard penalty repeat first down. Well, Trent, Trent Williams got beaten inside and as a result of that watch he gets beaten inside and what, what makes the quarterback get out of pocket. That's just a good move a very very tough this week grabbed the jersey as the as Jeffrey Fitzgerald was ripping past him and Fitzgerald's got some big numbers for the Kansas State defense he transferred in from Virginia six sacks eight and a half tackles for loss Yeah, had four of the six coming over the last two games so the second half of the season he has picked it up first and 20 middle screen and well diagnosed. Big oh, play going wow. the distance. Ryan Boyles touchdown Oklahoma. Flag down though, right where he caught it over the middle. Umpire threw the flag. Is he calling somebody downfield or is he calling holding? I think he's talking it over with the referee. Was trying to determine if somebody get downfield before the football was there born. I didn't see any real holding going on in there. Yeah, because you did a lineman release early. Well, yeah, you let your guy go and rush the quarterback, and then you have to make sure you don't leak down the football field. I think that's the discussion right now. Was there leakage down the football field with an ineligible man downfield? Holding. Oh. Offense. Ten yard penalty. No. First number. down. <laughs> Dead ball after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. On the offense, wow. number 85. That's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the other penalty. First down. 25 yards in penalties, and it's first and 35. It was first and 10 at the 28. Don't forget after the pass interference call on K State. Just a bit of a change. Let's see what happens here. If, if, if somebody, oh, it, I mean, where's the, I wonder what the call is. I guess it's down the football field yeah. right there. There was a double team. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that, that's where the hold was called. So the infraction is, the hold is from the point of the infraction down the football field. Then Royals must have had something to say, taunting people in sportsmanlike conduct. By the way, it's first and 45. When's the last time you saw that? DeMarco Murray up the middle for three to the 40. First and 45. I can't remember. I'll tell you, you know, Kevin Wilson, how would you like to be him? He makes a great call, goes to his playmaker, middle screen, perfect call, and it looks like it's a touchdown the way Royals accelerates, and it ends up being first and 45 instead of a touchdown. He's got to be thinking, are you kidding me? I don't have a play for first and 45. There's Kevin. He said, man, I thought I made a great call in that middle screen, and you did. And, and, and how can you have him, Bradford's over his left shoulder, how can you have a first and 45 after making one of the best calls you've made all game long? Totally different game. The Sooners were shut out in the third 15 minutes of play. Now we get ready for the fourth. A 28-23 lead in the momentum belongs to Kansas State. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. We get ready for the start of the fourth and final 15 minutes of regulation in a 28-23 game. And our eHarmony number is through three. And as you look at these, don't forget, at the end of the first 15 minutes of play, it was 158 total yards to 19 favoring Oklahoma. And now Oklahoma only has a three-yard advantage. So Kansas State since then has outgained them by 136 yards. Second and 42. That's the number. Second and 42. On the play fake to Murray. He's on the flat, and nobody has accounted for DeMarco Murray. Good yardage inside the 45. That's a blown assignment completely. Down to the 42. Yeah, and it wasn't like he wasn't just wide open uh, field and vision. 
a lot of times linebackers disregard the back that the ball is fake to and you can't do that Bill Walsh made a living out of throwing to the football to the back that was the play action fake to in the West Coast offense like Roger Craig maybe yeah now can they get in field goal territory even if they don't get the first down Broyles making a miss now does he run himself out no and down the sidelines still in bounds wow. he was close to a first down and they give him a first down at the 17 yard line man he was very close to going out he was and the, the guy that I've seen do this the most lose ground to gain ground was Barry Sanders he would lose ground to gain ground eventually watch Broyles here lose ground to gain ground and he stays in bounds tight ropes the sideline and gets down the football field to move the chains. Do we see a challenge? Outstanding effort on the spot. I would. What do you got to lose? And Bill Snyder is challenging. Yep, I would. In a game that is this significant for Kansas State in a five point affair, yeah. I would definitely challenge the spot. And this drive is huge because he got a great spot. It's a five point game and they're in field goal range right now. Let's see. Does he step out of bounds? He loses ground to turn it up the football field to gain ground. He does no. stay in bounds. He stays in bounds. But where that's, does he go out? That's an incredible effort. Pretty good spot. Yep. It's it, you know pretty they good have, spot. Yep. Give these Big 12 officials credit. They did. They were they were in position. On top of it. Their mechanics were good. They were in position to execute their mechanics. Kansas State is challenging the ruling on the field of forward progress. That the player was out of bounds prior to the first down. We have seen nothing yet to overturn it. Now, other angles. Now, I'm, yeah, I don't know if Bill is necessarily challenging that he stepped out of bounds. He's challenging the spot of the football for forward progress for the first down. Within that is the challenge to make sure that he stayed in bounds, but we've already seen that he did. And how about the athletic ability? For, for Broyles to stay in bounds like he did. He's okay, he's out. knocked out of bounds at a at a you know at about the 30, what the the 23 yard line? Between the 23 and 22 yard line? No, 17. And it there, yeah, 17. And this is because of the first down and what he needed. That's why this is significant right here. Well it's still it, in? Yep. It's still you know what though? Pretty it, good call. And where's the football? You gotta, you gotta, when he steps out, his, his foot is out, where is the football? After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner made the first down. Yeah, it was a good call. Yeah. It was a very good call. And you know what? There was another down, even if they didn't get the first down. Right, it would have been I mean, fourth. It, it would have been fourth. Fourth and a yard. And you go for it, I think, at that point. I don't know about that because then you go by up by eight. Or third? It was that was the third down. But if you, I'm just saying, if it if it's a yard shy of field goal, with the second team timeout. Well, they got one left, but I don't blame Bill Snyder at all, and especially the way it looked. How about Broyles though? They took the touchdown away from him, penalize him, and he says, "I got to make amends here." And first and 45, and they pick up the first down. Well, the big play was. Leaving alone the running back who got considerable yardage. And that running back's got it now, DeMarco Murray. You know, he made it manageable for him on third down. It wasn't third and forever. They could pick up the first down as Butler puts him down, and, and he picked up better than 15 yards on a dump off. Yeah, well, and when it's first and 45, you definitely don't go for it all at once. You got to chip away at it. And uh, Oklahoma was masterful chipping away at it in Kansas State. Kind of, kind of lost uh, some of their defensive responsibilities in that sequence. Call it second and eight of the 15. What a strange game it's been. Nobody has Murray again. How can you forget about DeMarco Murray completely? And he's close to a first down. Is that just a blown assignment? DeMarco Murray is is a good receiver. I mean, he runs great routes out of the backfield. He's got tremendous hands. They actually. We'll motion him out of the backfield and put him in the slot as a receiver. When the coaches vote you first team all Big 12, like he did, they did last year, you could do some things. And DeMarco Murray can. Now Landry Jones on third yard. The other thing this is doing is eating up clock on Kansas State. It's Murray. Man, he's got the first down. Well, that was power football. And a good job by the man who met him up the middle at the same time. Butler to try to push him back. It's a good play all the way around. They pulled uh, Stephen. And a roll letter, too. They pulled Stephen Good, the right guard. And they pulled him around the horn and tried to get the kick out block. And yeah. It was a junior from Wichita. Linebacker came downhill. Roll letter. And a nice hit. Yeah. Not, not 
soon enough. First and goal from the six. Up the middle and down to the one. They are featuring DeMarco Murray, the junior running back from Las Vegas. He was also, when I say first team All Big 12, he was first team academic All Big 12 last season as well. And we don't want to forget about that. Somebody who does it both in the classroom and on the field. Well, you, you, I, I got to give Oklahoma a lot of credit. They have a touchdown that's taken away from them by penalty, double penalty. They have first and almost half a football field. And here they are knocking on the doorstep again for another touchdown. That's a team that said, you know what? We'll respond to the adversity. We're not going to let it disappoint us and discourage us. They stayed right with it. Long time. Play clock coming down to three. Ah, fullback yep. flinch. Yep. Back clock. Yeah. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense number 34. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. You think there's some anxious fans in this ballpark? Yeah. <laughs> they're getting their they're getting their team their team a little bit. In the in case of the jumps here. Yeah, it, 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 the clap moved. Uh, Murray started moving and leaning. Just obviously the communication from booth to sideline to the football field was disjointed. Boy, you were talking about the locks on Carter, the safety. What about Matt Clapp? Oh, those guys. <laughs> they must. They, they must have a lot of split ends. Second goal outside of the five. It's Murray diving. He's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. One of the more one of the more unusual drives you will ever see. And, and what did they do to score the touchdown? Throw the ball to Murray out in the flat. Kansas State still hasn't covered it. They did this three times in the drive. And Murray still able to get to the edge and get inside the pylon. Amazing that they allowed him to be an available receiver to Landry Jones that entire drive out of the backfield. Tress Way. And it's a 12 point Oklahoma lead. Jim Knox, what's cooking? Okay, hey, Joel, tradition here. Sooner Schooner hits the field after every score. Come on, Cameron, let's pick up some speed here, buddy. This has got to be faster than Ralphie the Buffalo. Here we go. Oklahoma with their first points of the second half. Our direct TV game summary is the Sooners take a 12 point lead. Man, converting on first and 45. Amazing. How about Jones? Four touchdown passes. Now he's got 17 touchdowns and only six interceptions. He's starting to roll. Yeah. Kansas State can't say enough about Thomas. You know, Thomas has been their catalyst, especially in the second and third quarters. We're early in the fourth now. And Landry Jones for the game, 20 of 31, 217 yards with four touchdowns. He has not thrown a pick. Valentine and Banks wait. It'll be Brandon Banks. Inside his own five, wheeling it out. He's going to lay it up oh. outside. Look out. The little guy can run. <laughs> Brandon Banks down the sideline. Doesn't look like they'll get him. They won't. Touchdown, Kansas State. Brandon Banks has put him back in it. That's his fourth kickoff return touchdown this season. He has one of 91, one of 93, one of 97, and add that one to the books. You talk about a response. Wow. Disbelief at Memorial Stadium. So Brandon Banks, final little lane. Man, once he turned the corner, trying to catch him. He's averaging over 31 yards per kickoff return on the season. This is number four going to the house on his career. That's his fifth touchdown uh, kickoff return touchdown of his career. And he's averaging about 30 yards per return on his career. Unbelievable. 98 yards. The extra point. They finally get it right. And it's a five point deficit. It did not take long. <laughs> Kansas State will not go away. Almost four minutes gone in the fourth. Brandon Banks and the Wildcats alive and well. Fine performance by Brandon Banks, a 98-yarder, but nothing new. He owns the Big 12 record. That is his fourth of the season. 91 and 92-yard returns in the same game. That came earlier this year against Tennessee Tech. 97 yards at the expense of Texas A&M. And to get him back into the game, a 98-yarder tonight. But the two we're seeing, 
They were early against Tennessee Tech. And once you're in the corner, Dave, they look like they had an angle. Forget it. Well, and, and like Bill Snyder says, he's got athletic speed. Look at him bend to the left. They had a, a, a set up for a kickoff return left, started up to the right, took it left, and everybody's five yards short of the intersect point. Once Banks gets cooking, I'll tell you, he can turn those legs over now. Five foot seven, maybe. 150 pounds, maybe. The, he plays big. Well, the NCAA record, if you're wondering, is five kick returns in a single season. All right. There's a lot of season left for Brandon Banks. He's got 16 touchdowns now. Ten of them have been 50 yards or more since 2008. He's had four receptions, five kickoff returns, and one rushing touchdown of over 50 yards. Big play guy. From the one, Moses Madu of the Sooners. He's got to lane up the middle. And that is pulled down very quickly. Nice tackle going down low. Billy McClellan, the defensive back, a senior from Torrance, California. And now, how does Oklahoma and their offense handle the pressure once again? It was down to five, don't forget, before the touchdown drive and a long one. And they handled it very well the last time. It was a super long drive because of the first and 45 situation they put themselves in. Boy, it's been a crazy second half, hasn't it? From the 32, DeMarco Murray. And the gang tackle him after he picks up four. Well, if it goes three and out, then you're going to have some really anxious fans here with 27 games on the line. I'm talking to the winning streak at home for Oklahoma. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. And Overstock.com, our award-winning customer service, will make you feel at home with the O. Landry Jones out of the gun on second and a half dozen. Pop over the middle to Nell. Good to see him wow. back. And he's got a big play over the middle for a first down. So the shoulder feeling much better, obviously. Man. And he took that ball north and south. I mean, the yards after catch were instantaneous. Wasted no time in getting up the field. 30 yards, and the tempo is picking up for Oklahoma. Out of the edge, it's available. And a big time play, yards after the catch. It's DeWan Miller. They've got a nice compliment of the receivers. I mean, Kansas despite State. Despite the injuries. Kansas State trying to substitute. They didn't even get lined up and get in three point stances before the snap the prior one to this. DeMarco Murray flying on the play, holding probably. They threw it at the feet of Stephen Good. Yeah. And he had a cut block on the backside. He was engaged with Daniel Calvin. Personal foul, chop block, offense Good call, 70, Dave. 15 yard penalty, replete first down. And what he did was when he cut him, the center was engaged. They call it on Brandon. Working on the backside. Corey Brandon, the junior from Course of Canada. The right tackle. Bob Stoops just biting his lip. So frustrated. Can't believe it. I mean, these are massive penalties. Personal foul penalties. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. You can't have those kind of self-destructions. So it's going to be second, and instead of they only needed a yard. Now it's going to be second at about 15. Ton of time. Down to the break. Go on, Miller. Got the yardage back. He was short of the first down by about two. Uh, they, I guess they're saying, hey, we converted on first and 45, second and you know less than 20. We're cool. I mean, they, if, they did, if they didn't take two steps back for every step they're taking forward, they could be really doing something. They're in field goal range, though, already for Trasway. Need two. Man, DeMarco Murray gets it. He's hitting it up Going inside the 28. It moves it down to the 27. So he's been the featured back. He used a lot of Chris Brown in the first half, but DeMarco Murray here in the second half. And he's right tonight. That ankle's feeling pretty good because he is hitting it up in there now. He's smashing the ball between the tackles. He's fresh. They, they held him out of the Kansas game last week. He had the win in Lawrence. So Five-point ball game. Nobody could have anticipated this. <laughs> One of the wilder games we've had in a long time. Oh, missed. Box play. Landry Jones can't get away. He is run down by Hulick. Well, the mistake that he made there was when it was botched, hit the hole that the play is designed to be run at. You didn't get the handoff executed. You can't just run to the to the sideline, try to outrun everybody. Okay, he turned the wrong way. His back's passed. Run up the middle where everybody's blocking. There's nobody blocking to the perimeter. You're not going to outrun everybody. 
you, you know, you just cut your losses instead of increasing the losses. So the wrong escape route. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Second at about 16. His exit strategy was questionable. It's out of nine. Don't forget K-State's only got one timeout left. Play clock inside of three. A little dump off again. Against Dewan Miller. And it's going to bring up third and ten. Brought down by Darius Thomas. Nice job in space. I mean, that's yeah, just one-on-one. -on -one. First-year freshman from Dallas. Seeing more and more coaches, we talked about it, use first-year players. Forget about the redshirt here. And Kansas State is growing up before our very eyes. I mean, they're, they're learning a lot from this football game, no matter the outcome. And they stop them here on third and ten. Eight to play in regulation. Bring the tight end over. Ton of time again. Landry Jones. He's got a wide open receiver. And it's a first down. Janelle brings it in. So Broyles early in the game had a couple of scores. Now Tanell in the second half. And it looked like they moved it. Yes, by a yard, he's got the first down. You can see the Kansas State players offensively and defensively. The most important thing you have to have between coaches and players is trust. And they trust and they believe. And they're, they are really growing up during the course of this football game, game overcoming the hole and the adversity they dug for themselves. But let's not forget as a timeout is going to be called. The previous play is under further review. Oh, they're going to look, but and, and potentially for the spot. But remember that Landry Jones is a redshirt freshman as well. And a clean, efficient game by this quarterback. He is 25 of 36 now for 295 yards with four scores. Uh, he's he's played well and no interceptions. He's he's had good ball security. He's taken care of the football. Uh, the, I saw one of the replay officials at halftime. Uh, their system is down. They're they're going by Tebow. Ooh. So now he's he's basically going by his eyesight until he can get the TiVo system working to take another look at it and he can't get to it fast enough. So that's why there have been a lot of replays that have been requested because the equipment is there's some issues and problems with it. DVR or TiVo. A little TiVo action. <laughs> After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And the officials are right there on the sideline. The one thing the officials down in the field have been positioned properly and they've executed their mechanics exceptionally well. Oklahoma still with three timeouts on the board. Only one remaining for Kansas State. They used one and they lost a challenge losing another. Just took a look right there at Vic uh, <coughs> Vic Coney. One of the defensive coordinators it's Chris Kosh and Vic Coney are co-coordinators on the defensive side of the football. First down for the 17. With a crossing pattern underneath, and it's Boyles. He was the key figure in the first half, bringing up a first and goal with a gain of a dozen. Well, he is the go-to guy. He is a playmaker extraordinaire in the slot. Very, very loose in the coverage. I mean, you know, very, very antsy about what Boyles can do. Bouncing outside to Marco Murray. Just back to the line, and that is it. And, and trying to go up-tempo and with speed before Kansas State can get set. And remember, coming into this football game, Oklahoma giving up a little over 10 points a game. Kansas State's hung 30 on them right now. That is truly one of the biggest surprises. So far, the defense is held up against everybody. And really good offense is Murray left side, diving. He's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Boy, Murray's a special player. He's got a, a definitely has an NFL body on him. Durability is the biggest concern with him. Seems to have a lot of injuries, a lot of injury history. And right here, he has got that pad level as low as you, he is crawling into the end zone, keeping his knee off the ground so he's not down by contact. Man, amazing effort. Trash wave with the point after. Yeah, the Sooners increase their lead to 12 once again. 42-30. Where's Jim Knox? See the back of that scooter. How about the guy hanging over the edge? Holloway night in Norman, Oklahoma. With six and a half left and a 12-point lead for the Sooners. And as we look at our Lexus playbook, well, Kansas State call it return left. Yeah, and, and, and Brandon, banks banks on it. Well, watch him set it up. 
Watch Banks going to start to the right and make Oklahoma distort their lanes. Then he's going to cut it back and hit the crease. Outstanding effort by Banks. The way he takes it up upfield and makes Oklahoma get out of their cover lanes a little bit. And he basically outruns everybody. He changes the geometry. He changes the angles on the football field. They all come up five yards short of the intersect point. Kansas State has a history of little guys that can't. Darren Sproles yeah. did an incredible job for them. A more power, maybe the quicker of the two. So Banks is back. Short one, and they kick it away from Banks. It'll be Valentine. Wise decision. Valentine stopped at the 30. That's the way you take Banks out of the return game. Remember uh, David Allen, the return guy for Kansas State as well? Heck of a return guy. They've had some history there. You're right, Bo. What a weapon he is kick away from him. You know they'd rather give him the ball at the 30 yard line than let Banks try to maybe take it to the house. So Kansas State has had the ball touched it basically three times here in the second half. Two long drives scores touchdowns and the 98 yard return by Brandon Banks. What do they do on their fourth series now. It's first and ten. K State at the 30. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knox, and Norman. For those of you just joining us, play clock expired. He kept looking over to the sideline. Play a game. Offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. And that'll make you crazy as a staff because that's before you even took your first snap on a new series. Exactly. Those pre snap penalties will kill you. Crowd noise is a factor. Communicating from the booth down to the sideline and getting the signals into the Quarterback is a factor. So time is running out on Kansas State. It's back at the 25 on first and 15. Quarterback call. Grant Gregory. Good run. Seven across the 32. So they got the penalty yardage back. Let's see if they can get maybe Daniel Thomas involved or even a gadget play that they've been saving. And the other thing that is in favor of Oklahoma at this point of the game in a 12 point game they have the full complement of timeouts Kansas State only has one if they had burned their final timeout there to avoid the five yard penalty that would have been a tough dynamic for them as well they're between the rock and the hard place there. Thomas is the single in the backfield. Use him as a decoy Gregory. And with a comeback route, first down. Snaps has it inside the 45 to the 44. He recognized he needed to come back and help his quarterback. Gregory, a sixth year guy out of South Florida. Once he realized he had that extra year of eligibility, he comes to Kansas State. Just a hard working kid. He knows he's got shortcomings, working on them to improve them. He's had a very solid football game tonight from a decision making process. Still no turnovers in this football game. That's outstanding execution by both teams. The first down at the 46. Gregory is 15 of 20 with that completion. Shovel pitch. Valentine wrapped up immediately. A yard, and that is all. Jeremy Beal stayed at home on the play. And that's one of uh, Bill Snyder's little gimmicks in the playbook to slow down the pass rush. He'll run either a screen or a little shovel pass. He's, he's really emptied out his playbook tonight by different formations. He's run the option to spread them out horizontally. Then he's pounded him inside with the with the ISO and the counter plays and the power plays. Then he's thrown it over their heads out of the uh, out of the, the wildcat. He's done it all. And they go to Valentine in trouble. Throws it in the direction of both Snipes and Mastery. But again, Jeremy Peel with the heat. A junior from Carrollton, Texas. Led the Sooners in sacks last year, seven sacks this year. On top of that, category once again, second team All Big 12 performer. Well, do you look at it? Do you look at that front four? Austin English, who you know a year ago led the Big 12 in sacks. McCoy, everybody's All American. Beal, pretty good talent up there at the line of scrimmage for the Oklahoma Sooners and the Wildcats from Kansas State. Clawing, scratching, fighting, hanging in there. Four down territory. So little time for Kansas State. And out of the reach of Banks. Closest one to it. Jonathan Nelson. 
Well, there's only four minutes and 22 seconds left. You only have one timeout. Fourth down decision to make. There was a deflection of the ball. Boy. Yeah. The ball, the ball never got to the to banks because it, at the line of scrimmage, through the maze of hands, the ball was tipped. So the ball game for K-State. Well, there'll be 422 to play it, as you just mentioned, only one time out of the board. Dominant into the series against the Wildcats. Let it continue. On fourth and less than ten, screen call. Valentine. He needs some help. And that'll do it. Wow. Oklahoma takes over on downs. Beal chased him down. And look how many teammates were with him. I mean the pursuit the dogged determination of the Oklahoma defense was in full evidence on that snap because they came after the quarterback full bore. I thought this is a good call but look at Oklahoma run after this football play nowhere to go. Look at how many red jerseys and helmets around that ball at the conclusion. Woo! That's a defense that can run right there folks. They've got reason to celebrate now. A little breathing room and a big stop by the defensive unit. But 30 on the board against one of the best defensive groups in all of college football. That's a surprise. Now Oklahoma takes over on downs after K-State just failed on fourth and long. Chris Brown takes it to the 39. And what Oklahoma's decided to do, two tight ends and a fullback, they're put on the big boy pads. And they said, okay, we're just going to try to grind you up now. You only have one more timeout. You know, if we, uh, if we can move the chains, make you burn the timeout, you know, we'd be able to genuflect, take the victory formation and genuflect and, and get out of here with the victory. That well, will be 28 consecutive home wins for Oklahoma. 64 and 2, the home record for the Sooners at home under Bob Stoops. That's the really remarkable number, 64 and 2. And 35 and 4 against the Big 12 North counting championship games. Brown again runs up the back of his own blocker. DeMarco Murray, Dave, has the last two touchdowns for the Sooners. And I bring it up because the second was his 40th of his career. And there's only seven other Sooners that have more. Listen to this list. Right, beyond, right in front of us, Greg Pruitt, Adrian Peterson, Chris Brown, Joe Washington, Quentin Griffin, little guy that was a magical one here, Billy Sims, Heisman. Yeah. And the legend Steve Owens with 57 on top of the list so that's great company for DeMarco Murray and a lot of football left for the junior from Las Vegas yeah, and that's he's a, at 40. That's a star studded list you just read off there Joel that's that's, that's a, a who's who of Sooner football no question that's a big list to be part of right there third about three time out and it is time, a time out. out for Oklahoma Oklahoma first of the half 30 seconds well, looking back on the way things developed early is it was all Oklahoma and Boy, did they come out swinging. Yeah, they really did. And uh, and Broyles is the, the playmaker, the go-to guy. And watch him sniff the end zone here. Yards after catch, yards after contact. Stretches out. And you know what? Go to the big boy, Ron Miller, 6'4", 225 pounds ahead of night. And then go back to Broyles in the back corner of the end zone. Outstanding sliding catch right there. And then on Halloween night, it's Valentine's Day. As Valentine's have themselves a couple of rushing touchdowns. And all of a sudden, here come the Wildcats. And then Banks starts to the right, weaves back to the left. He gets a distortion in the coverage lanes for Oklahoma. Makes it a 35-30 football game. And then here come the Sooners once again. Murray starting to get in the, in the action. And as you mentioned, he's got the last couple of touchdowns. So it has been a seesaw back and forth momentum swing game tonight. But now they can end it with a first down here. Need a little more than three. Delay action. Brown drops short of the first down by a yard. Yard and a half. Clock continues to roll, though, and only one timeout up there. And a 12 point deficit for K State. So K State came in a two game winning streak, taking four of their last five. And we talked about the overall discipline that Bill Snyder will always bring to a program. And it was on display tonight when they fell behind, and they were down to the break. 28 to 9 of the half. Yeah, and, and, and the, the players kept looking to, the, to their coach, and he never flinched. Never flinched an inch. I mean, he's got poise, he's got pride, and that's what he's passing on to his young football team. Yeah, go for it. 
Ended here with a first down. And Chris Brown driven Ooh, close. down. Close. I don't think he got it. It looks like K-State's got the football. So they get the football back with a 52 to play. They're down Brazil two scores Brown though. On the hit. Down two scores with only one timeout. What will happen? And, and Joel, they were in the power play. They tried to outnumber him. I mean, Oklahoma pulled backside linemen. They pulled the backside linemen trying to outgap Kansas State, and Kansas State just read it and filled it. Man, when that hit occurred, it took him sideways. Made the trip from the Little Apple. Drove in from Manhattan. The other team hung in there. But it appears it's going to be their second conference loss. So Demon 3-1, the leaders of the Big 12 North. Deep Got down it. the middle, Banks is available. They're not done yet. No. Inside the 35, down to the 32. Because if you can get a quick score, then the onside kick. Next. And Banks is hurt on the play. And Jonathan Nelson was the closest guy in coverage. Banks got banged up. But boy, get the ball down the middle of the field between the hash marks, and Nelson delivers a big hit on him and it hurts Banks. From the 33. Grant Gregory trying to buy us some time. Middle of the field. Should have been intercepted off the fingertips of Quentin Carter. And he knows it. He wishes he could have that one back again. On the move, trying to plant and deliver. Ball sails on him a little bit. Route, actually, Mastrude read it one way and he read it the other. Mastrude hooked up to the middle of the football field and quarterback read it differently and. Uh, Gregory just threw the ball down the field, and the, the closest target was the defensive back, Quentin Carter, and he couldn't hook it. On second and ten, blitz coming, and wide. A little miscommunication there. He was going to Colin Klein, who turned in. He thought he was running an out pattern. There comes Banks. He's back into the game, and they need him. Yeah, and, and again, no one can question this kid's toughness. Extremely tough. Five seven hundred fifty pounds. Look at him in the huddle. He's in the land of the Giants. He just a huge playmaker. We've already documented. He's just such a threat in the return game as a receiver, running the football. He can do it all. Third and ten for Grant Gregory. And a little too tall off the hands of Mastery. By the way, 34 7 is the score. Texas at Oklahoma State with four to play in the third. And that is a surprise to me because it's always difficult to play in Stillwater. That's a major accomplishment to dominate a team like Texas is doing at Oklahoma State. Well, Texas is on a mission, unfinished business. They they messed up on the road at Texas Tech last year and it cost them the Big 12 championship uh, opportunity. It cost them an opportunity for the national championship and they're not going to let it happen again. Plus it knocked Colt McCoy out of the Heisman race. Colt McCoy must have put up some decent numbers tonight. The team, the individuals are all in the thick of it now. Fourth and ten. Gregory out of the gun. Middle of the field, he's got a man. It's Banks again. Out of first down inside the 20. About Banks. Yeah, and, and Gregory showing some patience too when he let the play unfold. Banks has to check out again. And he's, he's he can't make it to the sideline. He has to stay on the field. They're saying no, you stay out there. He's trying to work his way to the sideline. It all starts with the protection. The protection was outstanding, and Banks got kneed in the head at the end of that play. I think he was a little woozy. 50 seconds to play. And oh. that'll do it. Carter's got the pick. Going down, and it's all over at Norman. First turnover of the game right there. And it happens in the final minute of the football game. So the Sooners will prevail by 12 with 42 seconds to play. Uh, the pick by Quick Carter, the free safety. And next week, the nation's best headlining in our college football Saturday twin bill. Colt McCoy. And the push for the Heisman, number three, Texas, take it on Central Florida. That could be number two. Alabama had a bite over. Get Florida decisively today. Oregon, Stanford, will all wrap up with Oregon State and Cal. It is a very, very deep year in the Pac-10 Conference. You look at the first seven or eight teams of the Pac-10 this year. It's a, it's a fight. Oregon and US, USC 
locking horns as well. When you look at the Pac-10, you go to Oregon State, you go to Stanford, sure. Arizona, Arizona State. Those are all quality teams, and you don't think of them as the first three or four. That's how deep it is. How about the job Kelly has done as a head coach after the fiasco that occurred at Boise State, on the field and off the field? And, and man, he is, he's got to be a candidate for coach of the year, the way he's held that whole thing together, and they're winning football games. Yeah, and I like this display more yep. than anything else. The sportsmanship between these two schools, uh, the relationships, the staffs. We talked about Brett Venables. He played linebacker at Kansas That's State, right. then worked for Bill Snyder. And the two teams getting together at midfield. Well, Texas on their way to 8 0, dominating right now Oklahoma State late in the third, leading 34 7. Oklahoma now, interesting, 3 and 1 in conference play with yep. the win. <laughs> they could really have some fun down the stretch. And the North is wide open as ever. How about all these 5 and 3 and 5 and 4 teams in the North, besides who's going to represent the Big 12 North in the Big 12 title game? I'll tell you, and Missouri's got three coming up winnable games for them before they see.